Good evening, nerds. It is I, Paul Conti, here with a plethora of other nerdy folk uh, for yet another episode of Warhammer. Doing this one on a Saturday, a little more laid back, a little bit off our regular schedule, and we really don't have anything in particular to talk about. So tonight it is basically just a paint episode. So, uh, you know, grab some minis and uh, make that gray go away. Um, we have. Uh, my usual co-host, Dez, with us. Hello. Uh, our frequent uh, visitor, Maroc, racking up more visits to other people's channels than vi videos on his own channel. Leave it alone, Paul. Uh, <laughs> the illustrious Vincent Venturella. Hey, how you doing, buddy? And our good buddy, Bob, who is part of our local gaming group that is uh, working on the... Uh, story components of the narrative campaigns and events that we are working on and towards and all that. He is the story writer guy, which I am glad we have somebody like that because I am terrible at those things. Is that official title? <laughs> story writer guy? So I, I like that. I'll, yeah. take that. I'll take that. Thank you. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, before going live, um, the kin were mentioned, and obviously some information has come out. I am a little behind the eight ball on that because I have not been paying attention to any of that for the last... I was up late last night refreshing New Zealand. <laughs> come on. Come on. <laughs> um, so I have no idea what the new stuff is, but I had an interesting thought uh, that I wanted to run by you guys. Okay. See what you think of my tinfoil hat theory about the direction they're going in, what the deep kin are foreshadowing. So, okay. uh, if I'm understanding the lore correctly, they were created by Tyrion? And Teclis. 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 Right. And they were sort of created and they were like rejects and thrown away basically yes they were extracted souls from Slanesh. Oh. it was his first attempt to remake his elvish people and he considered them a failure and cast them out yes they were all good until they started to have kids and then he was like those kids don't have souls and then the deepkin took off into the ocean yeah they were actually hiding it from, from him it's very emo yeah. So my thought is that this is actually, in a way, and we don't have Tom here to get really excited about this or <laughs> yell at me, um, that this might be foreshadowing to a reboot of High Elves. I mean, that it is. They already said what the reboot of High Elves is. It's on oh, their page with all yeah. the gods. Yeah, if you look at the gods, yeah. it says, like, Tyrion created this, Teclis created this, Malarian created this, and Marathi created this. When they did the Daughters book, they had the four elvish gods, I say, put finger quotes on it because Marathi's not technically a god and that pisses her off. But um, Tyrion was mentioned as having created angelic beings, elves of light, who were born in the shape of angels. So, like, that's the release right there. They just, like, they told you straight out you're getting angelic high elves at the end of the year. So enjoy that. That's cool. Yeah. I hadn't even looked at that Daughters of Cain book yet. It's in the... Uh, I'll see if I can find the exact uh, thing. Uh, it, it, that was just like my vibe just off of the little bit that I had seen. And it's like, yeah, Tyrion and Teclan, or Tyrion and Teclan seem to be trying to rebirth the high elves. Correct. And, and by the way, the conversation, the short story between Marathi and uh, and Malarian also say as much because they talk about how the twins are achieving what they're aiming at with alarming efficiency hmm. and like are very it's a wonderful short story. It's called um, uh, The Lost Soul or something like that. Highly, highly recommend it. Um, it's a it's a great it's a great little story of them. Oh my God, that's way too small. What is this from? I found it, but it's like, I found a teeny tiny version of it. 
I was kind of wondering if this isn't pointing more towards the return of Slanesh. We've got Marathi, who it may be some sort of an incarnation. And then we've got Slanesh involved with this additional elven race. So that seems to be the direction I was guessing it would go in. I mean, I'm guessing Slanesh released January. That's my, my just sort of guesstimation. I think this is all leading up to Skaven. All the all the clues are there. They're enveloped in all of it, yes. It's I, definitely leading towards Slanesh, because Slanesh has figured into the story. Slanesh appears in the Lost Soul story. Yeah. And, and like, they also, talk about how the bonds are weakening, and if they're found, they won't be able to protect him. Like, hold them so. at bay. Yep. So yeah, so, the Dark Princess will definitely return. Now we just have to find the the appropriate uh, non-binary gender pronoun for Slanesh. <laughs> I think it's Slanesh. Oh. I just use Prince with the S in parens. Wow. Uh. You know what I'm saying? Like Prince, because Prince and Princess are this. You just paren the two S's. Easy. Yep. Easy peasy, my friend. It is. <laughs> so how are we all thinking about Deepkin? What, what has been revealed that I am unaware of? Well, all the scrolls are out, obviously, from the, the first wave. So yep. we have scrolls for everything that's... Uh, current, as it were, you know, available right now for pre-order. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the points and stuff have been leaked out and all of that kind of thing. So from what I heard with the uh, the reviews that went up online like today, uh, there's a lot of cover bonuses in that army, like a lot, like your actual battle trait for the army. And then, like, if you have one of the big turtles on the board, it gives, like, a 12-inch bubble out of cover to whoever's 12 inches out from it. Uh, the Rightfully tough to kill. Especially yeah. if you're surrounded by whatever whatever garbage with the, the, uh, the army trait they have. They're going to be they're gonna be tough. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that turtle has... Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a three-up save. It is. So yeah. turn one, you put it down on the table, and it has a one-up save. Because turn one, it's got cover. It's in its own 12-inch bubble. And it has a three-up save. And you can't target it unless it's the closest thing. Mm -hmm. Shoot at it, yeah. Crazy. Ah, well. Yeah, shoot at it. You can, you can mortal ah. wound it right off the table if you want. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, it was funny in the uh, the game on Warhammer TV. It got taken out by uh, Festus the Leash Lord. Hmm. I thought that was pretty funny. It was nice. useful. How? I mean, it was on like one wound left or something like that. So. <laughs> hey, you got to watch out for Festus, man. He's a uh, dude's brutal. He'll get yeah. you every time. He'll dump that potion right down your throat. You won't even see it coming. Yeah, I mean, so far for me playing him, he has been nothing but disappointment. Yeah. Um, but I'm hoping he is just like holding out for when it's important. <laughs> holding out for when it's important. Gotcha. Yeah. The, <laughs> yes. I mean, the, the eel riders are very tough. The, I mean, what do you want to talk about? There's a lot to unpack there. You know, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to, we'll, I'll do a whole show on it in two weeks after the book's out. But yeah. Um, like, what would you like to talk about? Do you want to talk about the Eidolons? Do you want to talk about the Thralls? Do you want to talk about the eel riders? Uh, can we talk about uh, how their battle line are like really good? So you want to talk about so, the like, thralls? The thralls with swords they're, uh, specifically. They're Namardi or whatever they're called, or yeah. those the ones with the uh, whichever. They're both good, but the ones with the swords are like really good. Yeah. So the Namari thralls are like 140 for 10. They're move six, five up save, six bravery. Um, bases, two attacks, three up, three up, neg one, one damage. 
Um, they have a their little icon bearer. Um, what's up, buddy? Their little icon bearer uh, uh, lets him reroll battle shock tests, and he has plus one attack. There's a little funny rules caveat off of that that's going to show up in the FAQ. We won't talk about that at the moment. <laughs> And uh, you get the whole unit gets an extra attack if you're attacking things that only have one wound, and they do or they do plus one damage if you're attacking things that have four or more wounds. So, like your sort of mid range troops are the best for killing them. So, there you go. No yeah. swearing, Ryan's got the kids in the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We're on our way to a, a teddy bear's picnic, all right. You nice. Love it. Nothing on my hobby time. All right. I love it. And to see the ducks, apparently. <laughs> Let's crack a my Yankee friends. Uh, we are discussing the deep kin. I don't even want to call them leaks. Just the reveals that we have had. Yep. That like their battle line are stupid good. I mean, they're glass cannons, certainly. Like, if they are the closest unit, they will die pretty fast. They'll die pretty fast to a lot of mid range troops. Great against Nurgle. I don't know about that. Because, I mean, they, yeah, they have a five up save, but that's going to go to a four on turn one. And if you do have a turtle and they're within 12 of it, they're going to have a three up save. Isn't the turtle's buff wholly within? It's each model. Yeah, each model okay. wholly within. Yeah. And if so it's if they're, I mean, if they're gonna they're burn off the as a cover, sure. it's not going to stack. And even so, yes, I understand they're somewhat protected against that in the first turn. I'm not like my point is their worst nightmare is something like brutes getting into them. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, for sure. Like yeah, a three wound. Fair, yeah, that's the biggest fear of a lot of armies. Well, <laughs> you're not wrong. Brutes have delivered. Uh, Brutes in many ways have never left. They've always delivered the same great death at economical prices. So, I mean, they are a great unit, but sure. Mid-range stuff like um, that is challenging. I, I think it doesn't matter how good or how bad they are in the game. I just I just want to paint some of those fishy Aquaman-loving bad boys. Sure. Yeah. I, I like the... Uh the like uh the rule where like when your heroes are in the back like they can't be targeted right like that's that's a pretty awesome rule and i like the first thing that came to my mind when like that happened and he was talking about like uh how like the scroll dude has like a six up save and five wounds or something like that i was like that sounds like a job for chameleon skinks <laughs> right into combat right shoot at him hopefully he dies yeah you'll lose the chameleon skinks but at least they won't be getting those crazy, like, tied prayers and stuff off. I think that a lot of the rules that we're talking about are great in that they fit the lore of the army. Oh, yeah. And it sounds like um, in some of the lore videos that I watched that those thralls are basically designed to be beat shields for the characters. And the fact that they don't have any eyes is appropriate for that particular race. And it sounds like they've got a whole cast system that supports the way the army works. So it should be good to see it from a fluff standpoint as well. Agreed. Yeah. It seems like the, uh, the noble bloods or whatever, which are like your, your knightly dudes, all the dudes riding eels and sharks and stuff. Right. And, there's another one where you know, it's basically the slaves, all the dudes that don't actually have souls. And then there's the actual like mages, which are at, at the highest, maybe. I can't remember which one was like which order they went in, but mm. it was definitely a cool sort of like insight to how their sort of society works. It And then they've nailed a lot of the mechanics of what I would assume life would be like underwater. I mean, the lanterns that lure people in make sense in terms of those uh, types of trigger fish and things that are deep in the ocean. Shooting into water, of course, is not easy to do in real life, so it shouldn't be in this game either, and they nailed that with the mechanics, so. Yeah, they're, they're like tied mechanic for the battle trait is like a really, really cool piece of design because it actually makes everything 
feel like it's in like it, it looks like that tide mechanic may be a good comeback mechanic too because if you are not doing well and the turns change and the tides change you may have a whole different feel to your army yeah there's uh there, one of the heroes if you take them as your general you can actually do it in reverse you can start oh, that's, that's pretty wild hmm. yeah i think my, it's uh, what you would describe my only ask is this okay all right we're done now please on what i'm asking to be done on is the following a progression over the turn order thing like it was cute when you did the cycle with nurgle and then you've got the blood thing with the daughters and now you've got the tide with the deep kin cool i get it i'm down with it please think of a new thing think of yeah, a yeah. new meta thing okay a good point but, um but you asked for plastic sisters and got that, so technically you can't even ask for anything else now, mate. Damn it, you're right. You're right, Ryan. Oh, you're, you're right. I gotta shut up forever, or at least until 2019. Until I've got the models in my hand, it's not real. They could always take them away. They're watching. They're, They're watching. Watching. Waiting. Just to disappoint you. <laughs> so, um, just before we get into, like, any more deep stuff, what are you working on? Uh, I am working on my... Uh, I am working on the dudes from... Uh, what are these guys? Uh, the Shade Spire crew. Here, I'll show you two funny things at once. The Starshiners? Happen. No, the... Um, for I'm working on a Golden Demon entry. I, short I, I saw what you're working on. The Iron Jaws dudes, right? Yeah, the Iron Jaws dudes. Here, I'll show you two terrible things. Here you go. I'll lock oh. on me for a moment. And I'm going to show you something both... I'm going to show you what I'm working on, something scary. See that? Mm, That's wow. what happens when the top comes off something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, like and a cup of coffee. Right in there. <laughs> uh, which is lucky because the models that I'm painting that I've spent, uh, let's say, 100 hours on are sitting, like, right here. Right here. Oh. And is and that ink? That is ink, yeah. Yeah, that... Wow. You dodged a bullet, Vince. <laughs> yeah, nothing got on anyone. I looked really carefully, but no, we, we, we escaped unscathed. Not even any little right. micro dots or anything. Um, but yes, I'm working on these guys, so here you go. Beautiful. They're looking real good, man. I'm uh I'm working on some stuff for the, for the dude that does uh, does my tattoos because I'm going in on uh, May the fourth to get a tattoo. So I'm doing up some uh, some stormtroopers. I'm gonna do Luke, Darth Vader, uh, and I'm also working on Arcanaut Admiral Keg Belly for, uh, <laughs> Path to Glory campaign. Nice. So are you compensating him in minis for tattoos? Yeah. No. I, I actually uh, he the he had a uh, re grand opening and I won for best tattoo idea and he gives you a free tattoo. So I'm just trying to get a nice form. Nice. And uh, what are you uh, getting done? We're gonna work out doing the uh, the rest of my sleeve on my left arm, but I'm getting a uh, like the old the old traditional skull and crossbones, but instead I'm getting a stormtrooper helmet and lightsabers. That's cool. Are you doing the lightsabers in color? Yep. It have to be and turquoise for my daughter's birthstones. Very nice. This is really hard. It's like hobby time in the states, but it's. It's mow lawn time and do stuff with your kids' time in Australia. It's making me real envious of you guys. I could be painting right now. <laughs> really, any time you could be painting, it's all just a choice. I actually did say that to my wife once, and the response wasn't polite. <laughs> On the flip side, we're playing with toys, and you're in Australia. Yeah. So you've got that going for you. Yeah, it's a, um, it's a nice cool 31.5 degrees and um, 
there's no clouds. And uh, if we leave the car and walk too far away from it, we'll die from dehydration before we find it again. So <laughs> you're not missing much. Um, does anybody have any suggestions, by the way, for wood? I've got to... Um, I'm making these uh, grave sites for the Death Army, and I'm on the last one, and I want to do a, um, a skeleton that's like still alive, but he's been nailed to a post, so he can't go anywhere. And um, I'm just struggling with wood. Uh, scale 75, ink intensity wood. I don't think he it's means. Uh, I don't think he means the paint. Or do you mean the paint, or do you mean the construction of the thing? Yeah, yeah. The, no, no. I've got, I've got a, I've got a piece that looks like an. Oh, darn it. I've got a piece that looks like wood, but I don't have. Um, I don't have a way of painting it, so to like to get the colours right. Everything I yeah. do just ends up looking like that shitty toilet roll that hangs off the back of prosecutors. Uh, then what Maroc said <laughs> yeah, is... Just, uh... Go ahead, Vince. No, I, what you said is correct. Please continue. You were, you were dead on. Um, just, like, do your zenithal highlight on it and put yep. intense wood on it. Done. Oh, yeah, okay. I know the stuff. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, actually. I'll do that. Oh, you want to go and get guys? And then, like, go. apparently, I'm being ordered to turn around from the ducks and go and get some chips. I'll return when uh, when I can hobby. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, well, you, you enjoy the lovely day, the sir. Oh, man, I love being a dad. It's like the best thing next to being next to hobby. So, yep. I get to go feed ducks. <laughs> All right, boys. I'll catch you soon. Right, oh, man. You need to shave, mate. All right. Yeah, you, 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 you need to shave that um that beard thing you've got going on, um, or at least grow it out a lot longer. I don't know. I feel like you're stuck in between the two, and you haven't you haven't committed to a choice. That's the drunk beard. <laughs> it's you'll you'll get there, buddy. Don't worry. I, I've committed <laughs> to looking mildly homeless. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, in that case, mate, you, that's looking great. You're doing some good work there. Keep it up. Yeah. Whatever you're doing. <laughs> oh, and just for the record, so it's on the internet. Um, Mitch, hurry up and get back online. I miss your content. Just wanted to, just wanted to put that out there. Indeed. Mitch, where has he been? Personal Every stuff. Second. Yeah. Life. Life happened. Oh, yeah. I know. Pop, pop in for a second. Yeah, he always sort of pops in, does a couple videos, and then disappears for a while again. Yep. Um. So, Paul, what are you working on? Uh, at the moment, I am working on Nerglings. Yes. Wait a minute. Uh, both a uh, like a base of nerglings and the uh, little hero nergling um, to go on the base of my uh, uh, Lord of Plagues for my uh, Path to Glory warband. Nice. Well, I will say that I'm also working on Path to Glory right now. I love the new zombie dragons and everything, but I want to make sure that we have the old school represented. So I've got the old, uh, maybe Zachariah vampire, an old zombie dragon. And I'm putting a feeding sacrificial pit in front of him with some braziers and some uh, cemetery headstones. So it looks like he's got somebody sacrificing creatures to him. Nice. I approve of that. I'm working on my Green Ranger Lizard Man. Are you doing like a oh, Power Ranger. Rangers course? Just this one dude. I just, somebody made a joke about it and I was like, I'm going to do that. Okay. <laughs> so I'm doing that on plaster to dry on this. Which is a base. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, story in which I'm going to finish. So 
I'm waiting on green stuff to dry on him right now, so I had to like re sculpt all of the uh scales on his back, massive gap under his leg. But yeah, he's gonna sit on that, so it'll be like like this, kind of sitting on top. That's great. I like that. Very nice, man. You need to actually uh, come travel down to uh, some events down here to show off your stuff. Yep. Yeah, that's probably never going to happen. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd love to, but like, uh, I'm about to have another child. And, uh, Conditions. Thank you. Um, yeah. And then everything with like the job and stuff. It's just yeah, kind of like, yeah, probably not. That's got to be stressful. That's a little well, that's why too I... many major life changes at one time right there. Correct. So it's just kind of like, yeah, it's like time like this helps a lot because you can just kind of like shut the door on all that other shit. Yep. yep. How many kids do you have, Merrick? I have... Two boys. Uh, my oldest is five, and my youngest is three. And we're about to have another boy. He's due in June. Oh boy! Got a pack of hooligans there. <laughs> it's yeah, true. My my dad, my dad was joking with me the other day about. Um, having my own starting line for a hockey team. <laughs> that is an admirable goal. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah, I did. That was clever. <laughs> you know what else you have is, uh, you know, you're like one more player away from a curling team. <laughs> and it's also one of Canada's favorite pastimes. It's not, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to throw this out there for you, Paul, so you don't get confused. But just because a sport has ice in it doesn't mean it's a Canadian sport. <laughs> yeah, tell that to you, guys, you guys have a lot of gold medals in curling for it not being a Canadian thing. <laughs> Well, I'd be a little worried about the Tim Horton spells when you have that many kids. It's going to get expensive oh. going through the drive-thru. Oh, boy, I hate Tim Horton so much. <laughs> and he screams <laughs> in the bathroom, right? Oh, boy. I did a lot of work up there, and I was never a fan of Tim Hortons either. No, it's... The, Sorry, it's, Canada. It's I'm not. Canada, you should be ashamed of yourself. No, you don't need to apologize to Canada for everything. They'll apologize to you. It's fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. But yeah, I just—I don't, I don't know. I'll be either. It tastes burnt. I'm sorry. That's just uh, my opinion. But yeah, that's my feeling about Starbucks too. Is that their coffee tastes like it's burned? Yeah, I think that um, it's one of the things that people say is appealing about it. But I think they're just lying to justify giving into the marketing for Starbucks. I, I love Starbucks, but I don't drink it out. I, I drink it at home. I think Dunkin' Donuts tastes like chemical burns waiting to happen. Dunkin' Donuts? Yeah, it's terrible. Oh, I am an absolute Dunkin' Donuts addict. So it's just different taste buds, I think. What the hell is Dunkin' Donuts? Are Tim Hortons? Yeah, Tim Hortons in the U.S. or New England or. Sure. Eastern, oh, yeah. yeah, eastern part of the U.S. It was oh, on my yeah, list of yeah. things I couldn't wait to get back to when I uh, moved back to Massachusetts from California. Yeah, it's yeah. Tim Hortons without Jesus. Tim Hortons. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I'm pretty convinced that they must put something in their coffee. That is like a highly addictive substance. Like it's Chris a caffeine, Paul. 
<laughs> That's like the only explanation for Dunkin' Donuts to me. Caffeine and crack. Yeah. No joke. You picked out what uh, models from the Idenith stuff you're going to pick up to paint? Or? Hmm. Uh, no, I've got some thoughts on it. Um, I mean, it seems like picking up one of those Eidolons would be, you know, good just for the sake of it, right? 100%. Well, that's, I, I got a thing that is going to be a very popular, like, competition painting piece. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is that the guy, like, on the wave? Yeah. The Avatar, yeah. There's yeah, two versions there, there, yeah. I really want to see somebody do, like, take a mold of that guy's, like, cape and actually, like, do a cast of it in realistic water. Wow. Put that on. Yes, yeah, that sounds like you. <laughs> Well, the issue there is I think that's a less interesting artistic accomplishment from a painting perspective, right? Like, I don't, I don't mean that, like, that's that's beyond my skill level to remold. I'm just saying, like, in the end, like, it would be the bigger painting accomplishment if you're going for, like, something as a painting competition would be to achieve more to make the water look realistic in hard plastic than to have it be clear. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure. But, yes, I do agree that would look awesome. Especially if you could like actually get the color tones in there. Mm -hmm. I love that model. It's uh, funny what, when you were asking what models were interested in buying. I was just getting a text from my wife reminding me that she left some of the models in my shopping cart. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, that boy's expensive, but uh, both in points and in the game. Um, but he's pretty beautiful. What are his like points? The same, he's uh, like the same as the Celeste Prime, isn't he? Or around about the same way, same price? No, he's like I think he's 110 US. Something right. like that. Yeah. No, I mean like points wise in the game. Like uh so points wise the uh war one is four hundred and the uh other one is four forty, I think. Really? My head. I don't think the aspect of the sea is that great. The aspect of the storm is the way to go. Let me make sure of that. Give me just a second. I got it the right way around, too. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. Yeah, aspect of the storm is the better one. Give me a second. Sorry. Scrolling. I have lots of notes here. <laughs> I like that you're providing elevator music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you gotta do something to fill dead air with. <laughs> Especially when I'm around. Looked at the stats. Did it look like the model was worth the point value? The aspect of the storm. The aspect of the storm is 400. The aspect of the sea is 440. There you go. So Whichever, how, however, that works out. Yeah, I'm guessing the, the asset. So very quickly, we'll we'll level set here. The generic Kang on unicorn or you know C unicorn is 240. The named guy is 280. Uh, basically, a bunch of the characters are 100. Uh, the shark riders are 140 for one. The there are two different types. The two different types of eel riders are either 160 or 140. Three for the offensive unit or uh, 160 for the offensive unit. 140 for the defensive unit. And yeah, there you go. So the big sharks are 140 a piece, and that's pretty much all of them. There you go. Uh, oh, and the Leviathans are 380. There you go. That's a bargain. <laughs> so there's there's that breakdown. Uh, now to go back to the this dude. Um, so what I say, aspect of the C was the more expensive one. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's the um. That's the double spellcaster who gets the sea mists and the tsunami, right? Yeah. I mean, that dude is stupid and powerful. Hmm. Uh, is, is, he's the one you're saying you weren't sure about? Is that what you're saying? So just to clarify, you're saying, hey, Tom, you're saying you're not sure about a 12 wound base three up save, automatic two up save on the first turn, double casting wizard. 
uh, with it, two of his own unique spells who can also fly 12 inches, or sorry, fly 10 inches. And penalize multiple units at minus one to hit. Right, and not have any depre deprecating wound chart like all other 12 wound things, oh, who is man. not a monster at 12 wounds, who may still benefit from cover and any other such associated thing, because he's not a behemoth or whatever. And he's not a special character, so you can give him an artifact? Correct. Yes. And you can put him on the vortex. And, and you can vortex him, yeah, yeah, to just really get it, to just really set the stupid level to a thousand. Yep. I like the other one better. And uh, so you want a vortex to be taller than a toddler. <laughs> he's pretty big. So you can um, actually get that. Is it possible to get that guy to 14 wounds? Because I know they they have something that gives like plus two wounds or whatever. Um, I mean, he's self, I don't know, but he self heals as well, which is another interesting aspect yeah. of him, right? Um, I like the one where you heal on the charge. That's the war aspect. The one one. aspect. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, What's he cost again, the caster? The caster's 440, the, um, the, the other one, Storm, right? Yeah, it's yep. 400 even, so he can actually ally. Their allies are, are, are an interesting list of things you would expect, like most of the Dark Elf stuff. Um, but it's also things you might not like. They have allies with um, um, wanderers, which is cool. Uh -huh. um, so that's kind of interesting. But I mean, like Stormcast and uh, some of the high elf stuff. They they have Eldritch Council as potential allies, uh, which is nice, right? That's uh, so that's your your lore mages and stuff, or lore whatever they're called. What does a block of swordmasters cost now? I don't know, more expensive than the thralls, I think. I think a block of sword master is like 180, right? No, like a block, a, a maxed out size. Oh, I don't know. Rumor is these guys don't have a a a um a horde discount. I, I have no idea. I don't have the sword masters in front of me. And I'm not I don't feel like turning and looking them up. So you look it up. It. Give me a sec. Um I'm on it right now. Don't worry about it. So as a guy that has not really looked at this army at all yet. Mm -hmm. Like, what is their overall shtick? Like, what is this army going to be good at? Uh, I think, uh, as with all things, it'll depend a lot on the build. Like, as with all the new books, it'll depend on a lot where you go. And we haven't seen enough of everything yet to really, I think, be able to answer that question completely. Um, I have some suspicions. Like, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do a pretty, you know, like, elite, um, like, a pretty elite hard-hitting army mm -hmm. um, with some really, really tough dudes if you um, if you lean mainly on the, the eel riders. Um, but, I mean, I don't... It's hard to say. And I'm sorry, eel, just the eel riders... Yeah, the they, eel riders. Yeah, are they battle line? Did you say they can be if the one of the dudes is your general? Okay. So you can you can have like a completely eel rider focused force. I think it's if the um, I think if you take the seahorse dude, they become battle line. I'm the pretty sea sure seahorse unicorn guy, seahorse unicorn. Yeah, Swedish steam cooker. But he's the only one with a command ability, anyways, right? I I don't know. I mean, I'm sure the special character version of him does. Uh, the special character version is 40 points more, and yeah. his command ability is the same thing, except you get to target, like, two units, and the range is increased to 18 inches instead of whatever it is. Because hmm. uh, Ash from Grill and Miniature Games was saying, just take the special character, like, if you're going to take him as the general, because it's only 40 points more. Yeah, you don't get an artifact, but his command ability is just... Way better. But you command, know, you don't get a ever. command trait either. That's correct. Hmm. I'll I'll have to wait and look at those and make my own call on that one. I'm not sure I trust that call. In general, yeah. special characters as generals is always highly dubious to me. I agree. Like unless it's Nagash, and I'm like, all right, you're good. You're you're in, buddy. You're in the club. For 800 points, he better be good. Well, he is certainly that. Uh, but he, he had to sit on the bench for a long time, to be fair. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
He has the time. Indeed, that's true. And gosh, is in no hurry. He, he can sit around and be overcosted for a long time and wait for his moment. He's not going anywhere. Yeah, I mean, the thing that jumps out to me right now are the thralls, obviously. Um, it's going to depend on on battalions. It's going to be a big pusher for this, like where they end up at the end of the day. Um, yeah. I think that... I mean, there is a Sylvaneth shared b a battalion in there. Interesting. Really? Um, yep. Yeah, their uh, their battalions are all pretty expensive though. Like, yeah, I just like the thralls are really good. <laughs> like, really good. Yeah, I I, I would say they're okay. No, I wouldn't say that. I would say they're good. I don't know if I buy really good. I think they're good. Do we know anything about how shipwrecks are placed? Uh, uh, can, I don't know how they're placed. We know what they, I know what they do. Go ahead. It comes in two pieces. Right. So right. you can either deploy the two pieces separately or as one whole. Right. But like, are you buying the shipwrecks? Can you deploy them mid game? No, it's, just, no, it's like uh, it's like a Sylvaneth Wildwood. You just get it. Yep. You get one. Can you ever get more? Well, it's it's one or two. It comes in two pieces. You right. can deploy it in one piece or you can have two separate ones. But I think the aura on the two separate ones is smaller than... Well, the... it, it would naturally be smaller because it's going to cover less foot of a footprint. Um, Six inches and so a time of wound or a mortal wound is allocated to an item of deepkin. Yeah, yeah, it's a ward save. Like the shipwreck gives you a ward save. Yeah. Six plus four is negated. And has the same, it has like a different version of the mortal wound kickback than the, yeah. the tree. Every unit within three inches on a four plus does D3 mortal wound. What? Sorry. One no, it's mortal one mortal wound or on a roll of a six, it's D3. Yep. yep. It's good. Cool tree. Good tree. Better than You're the a good tree. You're a good tree boat. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about all the like terrain included with armies been going on. It's really been a big thing. We're just pushing I mean, that all over the place. Mechanically, uh, I'm not super wowed by the army yet. They have some really solid pieces. Um, but they seem to be in set like it seems to there be for them to be in it. Like an incentive to like late game fighting, and there's a lot of armies that are going to be in their grill at like the top of one. I think it did describe them, and uh, I think maybe the Warhammer community site as an army that gets stronger as the game goes on. So I guess that's a chosen mechanic for them. They wanted it to function that way. I mean, that being said, they are relatively defensive at the top within the first turn, right? Right. Yeah, they are. But like, I think about, like, I think about. Yes, they do get stronger as the game goes on. But like, you set that mechanic alongside like Daughters of Cain. Like, they may get stronger as the game goes on. The Daughters of Cain really get stronger as the game goes on. In combat, yeah. I, I don't know, man. Like, it's it's hard for me to judge because, again, I haven't seen enough. But I have been pretty wowed by some of these individual components. Um, it's pretty late. I think those Eidolons are straight up powerful as all get out. Um, I think the Thralls are... Too. What's that? They yeah, they're expensive. Point, okay, sure. Star Drakes are real expensive. That doesn't make them bad. Like, if things are worth it, they're worth it. You know what I mean? Yep. yep. Yeah. The, it's, um, it's hard to compare them to daughters because, like, where daughters are like re-rolling to hit and to wound by that time, the the Ideneth are retreat out of combat, right? Like, hmm. it's it's two different like things. No, know. it's true. The Ideneth are seem like they're more sort of movement shenanigans and picking away. From afar type deal with the harpoon launchers and the all the guns and stuff on the eels and or the sharks. Yes, it, they're sharks. But yeah. Just saying guns on eels makes this sound like the best army ever made. <laughs> uh, it would only be better if there are lasers on the sharks. 
<laughs> That'll be in the 40k version. Yeah, the uh, the eel knight's ability to like ignore is it ignore rend? I can't remember. They're like electric barrier thing. Hmm. Yeah. Do they have any sort of electric offensive capabilities? It's sort of alluded yeah, to. Yeah, the it. offensive eels. Yes, the offensive eels can. Um, once a game, they can like zip zap and do a bunch of mortal wounds. I don't remember exactly how the mechanic plays out, but yes, Isn't they have it. They have a zip zap. Like that. What's that? Isn't it like where they fly over units? They can deal some mortal wounds. I don't remember. I don't remember. There's two sets of eels. Yeah. Um, I mean, there the spells look pretty good too, like. Yep. There's a teleport spell to move, you know, a hero nine inches away. There's a, a big bubble spell that gives everybody holy within nine inches cover. Um, there's a big bubble on the battlefield where you can uh, pick a point and do a bunch of more, you know, you can do like spread D3 mortal wounds around that point. Um You can kill a, a, a particular model within 12 inches of the character outright. Uh, you like you pick them and roll a die, and if your die beats their wounds characteristic, they die instantly. Um, you can uh, give you have a ne you have the neg one to hit, neg one to bravery spell, and then you've got the big corrosion thing, which is you know distant space. The farther you are away, the more you deal. Very interesting. It seems like a very. Uh different force from everything that we already have. Yeah, they, they seem pretty cool. And they remind me a little bit of like a Swiss army knife because they just, they have a lot of different tools to deal with a lot of different things. And I guess it's just, it's going to be a matter of tying all those things together. Do we know what their range is on their archers? Uh, they have two types of shots. One's at 18 and one's at nine. They go one. They have one shot within eighteen inches and three shots if you're within nine. Hmm. Um, oh, uh, other funny thing about the 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 named king, okay, is he is the introduction of something we've never seen before. He is the only existing uh, uh, model in AOS with this particular number on his scroll, and that is if he rolls a six to hit. With one of his attacks, it becomes Neg Five Red. <laughs> what? <laughs> yep. Is that the wow. king here rule? That's the king. Yeah, yeah. He has a Neg Five Red. Um, I mean, it sounds like a crazy thing until you're like, well, lots of people do mortal wounds on sixes, and that's Neg all the Red. Yeah. So, like, I mean, okay. Yeah. Why exactly was that not just <laughs> the mortal wounds at that point? Because it's more fun to write Neg Five, like as so, like there are multiple Neg Fives in 40k. All right, and let me tell you what, it feels great. <laughs> Swinging around Neg Five weapons feels really good. I said so, like <laughs> if it was my choice, Rend would just ramp up considerably, and Mortal <laughs> Wounds would go way down. Like it would just be Rendathon 2018 if I was overhauling units. <laughs> That seems like it's meant to be like a psychological thing on your opponent. It's like, yeah, you could charge that guy. If I roll a six to wound, he's got neg five rend. Do you really want to do that? It's just a fun number to say. Yeah. yeah. Neg five. It's like I have enough trouble like with my opponents when I tell them that fucking the Dread Saurian's bite has neg three rend, and you're going to tell me that your dude's got neg five? <laughs> well, everything about, every time they increase a crazy rend thing, what's the baseline that always gets referenced? It's Archaeon. Slayer of Kings, still neg one rend. Yeah. <laughs> one, like the Slayer of Kings, the Sword of Archaeon, the Ender of Worlds, the Grand Marshal of the Apocalypse, the Champion of Chaos Undivided. Neg one. <laughs> well, maybe if he would be decisive and pick a god, he'd be viewed more favorably. Everybody knows you just put him with corn lords on juggernauts, so that that way he just see he starts Slayer of Kings and people on like three ups. That's all you need. Now, this Neg five concept is interesting because it sounds like a strategy against the Deep Kin is is going to have to be some character assassination. 
Well, you're Maybe. not going to do that because they'll screen with their uh, with their rule. Well, yeah. it depends on how you'd like. Right. It could be tough to screen all those characters, as uh, as Maroc already pointed out. Things like chameleons can just jump up into combat. Oh, yeah. like, I'm things that can up. appear in other weird well, areas. Not only that, and Nagash will just snipe them out with spells. Correct. Like, and the spirit of range out spells. Yep. Any of the ethereals will go after that Neg Five unit. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, King Ghosts. <laughs> Piss off, ghosts. Piss off ghosts. Ghosts don't care about that shit. That's right. They talk about how they're sp it's supposed to represent the fear of being deep in the ocean. Well, how about the fear of being deep in death? <laughs> deep in debt? Is that what you just said? Uh, yeah. Deep in <laughs> <laughs> That's not no, that'll be. Let me say this. That's not what I heard. But that'll be what happens when they release like the collegiate arcane and eldritch council focused ability because it's just going to be a bunch of dudes with college loan debt. So like, <laughs> they all, that'll be their that'll be their special ability. They got nothing to lose. They're so deep in debt. They're never going to pay off. <laughs> they can never flee from battle shock. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to lose. I love it. <laughs> nothing to lose. Can't file for bankruptcy. Might as well YOLO. Exactly, correct. <laughs> oh, the fun. Sorry. You mentioned college loan debt. You spooked me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. I was out. Yeah. I, I would imagine that PhD has got uh, a decent price tag attached to it. Uh, this fall is 10 years in school. Woo! Oh, God. Wow. Somebody may I have mean, just had some of their debt come due. Perfect. Good for you for taking it all the way, but holy Christ, that's a long time to be in school. I mean, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to own it. That's right. Go big. I win oh. hard. I also lose hard, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the So would we like to talk about an early controversy with them? Sure. Yes, no, 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 no. no. This, this is not got like stop. I'm not gonna talk as about the victim. Thing. I'm not as someone victimized by GW's early rules changes. I'm not gonna talk about the thrall thing. Oh my god. I'm not gonna talk about the thrall thing. That's what you think I'm gonna talk about. I'm not. The thrall thing is obviously gonna get FAQ'd immediately. It's obvious. I don't understand what's the thrall thing. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'll very quickly explain the thrall thing. Because the Thrall combined the guy who gets the extra attack with the standard bearer, like it is the standard bearer that gets the extra attack, there's technically no limit on the number of standard bearers you can have in a unit. So you could just have your unit be 30 standard bearers, and as long they as they were all... one attack to the whole unit. Right, right. as long as they're all modeled as standards. Who would rules as though? Rules as written, that is accurate. It's obviously stupid. It will obviously be changed. Don't I mean, has yeah, Tom found that? No, no, no. I mean, it's just talked about. People look. People noticed this fairly quickly that it was a thing. Like whatever. It's I, I don't care. Okay, it's not a thing. It's going to go away right away. So it doesn't matter. Seems like a thing Tom would find. Yep. Maybe. When in doubt, blame Tom. He was no, just on the under an alternate name, so it didn't look like it was coming from him this time. No, I'm I'm not blaming him. I'm saying like that's the kind of stuff that he usually sees like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. almost no. Constantly. You're right. Uh, no, this yes. thing I wanted. Like you're to saying Maroc that I would see that if I were on the development team and stop it from ever being published. You oh, would be accurate. I mean, yes, that's, that's pretty. That. <laughs> let's let's not get let's not get ahead of ourselves. You never know what you're gonna miss. Okay, like look until you've sat in that chair. You know better than that than to criticize other people for missing stuff like that. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I think that it was probably talked about, but they're like, ah, nobody actually think that. Um, <laughs> or <laughs> I, I agree with that. Like, nobody ever do that. Being, yeah, or re more realistically is that there's probably some running, um, like there's probably already some fact in place that they're preparing where it's like you can only have the number, like there, there's some, a predecessor to this in the netter. FAQ, if you guys are familiar with this, basically yeah. you get enough netters as you actually get in the box. Yep. So you can have four per 20. Um, you can no, have no more because that's the actual number on the sprue. And I suspect that there's going to be a wider kind of push for that. As whatever's on the sprue is what you can actually equip. In a formalized fashion is what sure. I would just 
Perhaps. Um, but either way, no, that's not the controversy I wanted to talk about. Okay. Um, what I wanted to talk about is, so we're all familiar with their basic rule. You can only target the closest people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you like talking the, about the line of sight one? Uh, I'm talking about what happens when they have allies who are the closest unit. Interesting. So, so is it, isn't there a battalion or whatever? That no, you no, take? I'm not talking about battalions. I'm just saying, like, they have allies. They have a list of allies. Yeah? Yeah. Like, okay. Like, so you mentioned, like, the Wood Elves earlier. They could sure, have a, sure. a unit of Wood Elves in front. Sure. Or, or let's say, Fulminators. Okay. okay. Oh, oh, oh. Now I'm liking this less and less. So I have a unit of Fulminators as the closest thing to your entire army because yeah. I rode them way out in front. Yep. Can you target one of the? Can you target any deep kin units? Yeah. Yes. Well, the answer currently is falling down on no, and I do tend to like. I actually do agree with this ridiculous reading. I think rules as written, it is accurate that the only thing you can target in the army then becomes the Fulminators. I don't think that's right. I think that's not what was intended, but I do think it's the case. Does it say any unit from your army? uh, Where does the keyword sit? Does it sit on what you're shooting at, or does it sit on the... I will... Here you go. Yeah, Yeah, I can see where that would go, but I think it's a dumb ruling. Um, I, I know already this is also going to be answered in the FAQ, and it's going to turn against this, but at any rate, here you go. Here is the exact text on Forgotten Nightmares, the thing that is preventing the shooting. <clears throat> Missile weapons can only be used to target an Edeneth Deepkin unit with this battle line trait if it is the closest visible enemy unit. With this battle line trait. Correct. But that doesn't matter, right? right. It is. It has not... That is correct. With this battle trait... If it is the closest enemy unit, it is not at that point, the closest enemy unit. So even though the battle trait doesn't apply to the fulminators, right? Which there's no (laughs) argument about that. It doesn't, right? It still hasn't satisfied the requirement. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, it is not raw, the closest enemy unit. There is a closer enemy unit. My only pushback on that would be the that there's actually another reference to it in the book with one of the houses or whatever mm-hmm. that it actually says that your allies get that keyword. So they get all the bonuses from your tide stuff. Yes, of course. I like it's that one's one of those ones that I'm like, Oh yeah, that's an oversight, right? Like that's clearly, yeah. that was just something that wasn't thought about or like that they thought was actually already covered by the existing rule structure. Because like it does, if you go read the ally rules, it does feel like it should be covered by it, but it's just a, a weird sort of picadillo of the wording that lets it sneak through there. Yeah. Because you know, I'm actually going to come down on the side of I think that rules application is actually correct, and I think it makes sense because the the thing that's if you look like fluff wise, like they're they're like the things that are like forgotten. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, does it matter what other intervening thing is distracting you from forgetting them? No. So it could be an ally. Like, I don't think that that there's mechanically a problem with that because it's their ability to. The ether seed. Yeah. Well, my argument would be there is a problem because a unit that's clearly not having a battle trait is then benefiting from that battle trait. I see rules wise where that's the case, but like, again, I don't think it's the end or the beginning of the world. I just think it's, it creates a weird spot of messiness that the problem with it is Paul. And this is the big one to me. People won't intuitively, they, if most people read that and just think about it, they wouldn't think about it that way. Right, like in their mind, they would be able to target the deepkin unit behind because that's the unit that has the protection rule, right? And so you're inviting a bad play experience if people aren't aren't sort of if they don't know about this weird rules picadillo. 
would be something to talk to your opponent about before you start the game. Like, ask their opinion on it, and then whichever way they see it, play it that way until they fix it, right? Well, I mean, it'll be fixed in three weeks, so, okay. Uh, I'm sure like, we're going to have to put up with that for a real long time. Sounds like a Yeah, I mean, the development and Ben Johnson and all the folks have been real swift about that kind of stuff. Yep. They've been fixing it promptly. The FAQ turnaround is amazing. And by the way, everybody in the community has a role in that to play, right? Like, if you notice stuff, they want you to email and contact them at that, you know, GW PLC or whatever. So it gets fixed. So it gets fixed. They want to fix the stuff, so tell them. And they will fix it. And they will fix it. It's a very different world than what we used to live in, for those of us who've been around <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. Yep. It's so much better. Yeah, they know we're gonna abuse the shit out of it if we uh, if we don't tell them. That doesn't matter. We used to abuse the stuff. Out, we used to abuse the crap out of stuff for years, Tom. Years. Yeah. Things yeah, they just made didn't on want to know about it. They didn't oh, want they knew. Everything. Everybody knew. There was no question. It was being done at their tournaments. Everybody knew. They just didn't want to publish an FAQ back in the day. Like yep. it just. It was just too much trouble. That turnaround is one of the biggest deals to go from basically like there were questions that were open questions in the community for like literally five years and never got answered yeah. to go from that to two weeks. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. It's people will still complain. I don't get it. I know this could there could be a whole episode on how much GW has improved over the last few years. Well, I mean, I think it's still fair to complain if they do something wrong. You should call them on it. There's nothing wrong with that. They're not a perfect company, but you also have to celebrate the wins. I, I just believe in doing both. And I think for the most part, they've put a lot more W's in the columns recently than than L's. You know what I mean? Well, and I think you're absolutely right about that. And in part, it is because they care what the community does and has to say about what's going on. Right. They don't always care, like you said. So. Oh, yeah. Do they, do they have as ally Swift Talk agents? No, they do not. <laughs> That's a missed opportunity. Other people have said as much as well. The yeah, I think that would have turned me around on it. Well, I thought the Wanderers were cool. I thought the fact that there's a Sylvan Eth Battalion was actually really cool. I, d I do dig Did they that. have Scourge Privateers as allies? Yes, they do. Good. The uh, Pirates! Kind of wish right, you could add like, Seraphon too. Seraphon would have been nice for like three units of 10 skinks just to Seraphon are not going to get to be allies with anybody get it out of your head you <laughs> dumb space lizards don't aren't friends with anyone i think they no, i just say i think the agents are also see bearers i i just would like to see them like i don't want to have them ally into like a seraphon list but to have seraphon allies in other armies makes sense to me because of how the lore is that's, uh, that's why it. I keep pushing it. Uh, I don't think it makes sense at all. You weirdo space lizards aren't showing up to help anybody out. Like, and if you do, it's unpredictable. You're not, we can't bank on you. We don't show up with like exactly. you in tow. You just that's, decide to teleport in. That's exactly right. That's why you should, you should be allowed to ally in with everybody. Sweep across the board. <laughs> Stupid aloof frogs. <laughs> I have years of hatred for the Seraphon or for the lizard men. You understand? I, I completely understand. Yes. People are discerning it qu swiftly, Vince. Uh -huh. You did eat my god once. You think I'm going to forget about that? <laughs> Just let that one slide. I thought that that, that like got my god. Into not actually happening. What's that? I thought that got retconned into not actually happening. It did, but it still hit. Not in my heart. <laughs> 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 okay, that's fair. Uh, if it you you brought the moon down on their heads though, so like you're damn right we did. That's like that's that's even Stevens right there. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we still owe if you, you more. You ate our god. We're gonna end your whole race. Here you go. <laughs> well, sadly, we missed. There's still so many <laughs> people running around. <laughs> Just the stupid toads. That's that's. If there's even one toad, it's one toad too many, my friend. <laughs> because well, if there's one toad, it'll it'll be a skeleton named Croak because he apparently just can't die. Well, even though I thought he was dead in the story, but yes, you can't keep a good frog down, I guess, or a mummy frog down. Either His type. Will was, 
strong. I, I love that, that they're just like, yeah, you thought he was dead, but nope. To be fair, he is like stupid old and beyond powerful, so uh, I get it. He is like the the oldest like in the story now, I think. Like also, I just like to express my disappointment yet again that that Seraphon list with Croak on a Bailwind Vortex is not called Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. <laughs> Just because the croaknado is way easier to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess the like the the Disney Warhammer crossover fans are just not there to get the joke. Uh, but Mister Toad's Wild Ride would be the best. I mean, I don't disagree with your thinking here. That is a better name. But yes, croaknado. You know, those sci-fi movies are very popular. What are you gonna do? Yeah despite how terrible they are. But you can't uh, look away. You cannot look away. I'll tell you, Tom, it's funny you mentioned about, you know, nothing grabbing you. The yeah. uh, the eel army is what actually, for a moment, I was like, okay, well, hold on. You have my interest now. If I can just do an army with, like, 12 eels and some characters, I'm like, all right. <laughs> now we're talking my kind of army. <laughs> like, sure, there's a minimal number of figures on the table. Two turtles, well, a couple characters, and 12 eels. But you know how I roll, Tom, and 15 figs is an army I like. You gotta have one shark, too, at least. Those sharks are pretty awesome. Sure. Sure. They look awesome, but from what I like gathered from their rules, they're not all that great. Uh, this army seems to lack rend. Did anybody notice that? Like... I don't know. It's, uh, it seemed like there was a couple good places of some, uh, of some like neg two rend around. I mean, their battle line is universally like neg one rend. So I haven't well, seen. I'll be interested rules, mechanically. I want to see how they play as the tides change because that could cause the whole character of the army to change. Sure. Yeah, if there's other things that interact with what tide phase it is. Well, on a deeper level, if they have anything that stops people from retreating. There is. There's there's like command traits that you can give to your general and stuff, so your general gets like better on turn three when the tide's high and things like that. So uh and I'm pretty sure uh hit the guy on the the unicorn seahorse thing has, his command ability affects dudes on the turn three or whatever. Yeah, can but I'm just saying it's actually forced non-retreat because, you know, like just getting out of there can be a pretty great move to, if you can just get away. Oh, yeah. Just leave and let them do nothing on turn three is not a bad strat. Yep. Hmm. Like that is the turn that you want to use. Like this is where, you know, if they are prominent in the metagame, that's where the Vanguard Chamber is actually suddenly good. You know, you're rolling into turn three. You use your Lord Aquilor to just scoop all your guys off the table and be and like, just put them. Hey, yeah, enjoy turn three. Yep. Later. <laughs> Peace out. Yeah, sixty-six out of here. Well, the Aquilor you can just straight away. Yeah. Yeah. Right off the board. Yep. So I am. The best defense is usually not existing on the table. It's generally <laughs> hard to kill units that don't even exist on the table. I'm a little curious after talking about the lore and the mechanics and the aesthetic. Who's who's buying it? Are you guys buying these guys? Are you yeah. going to get into this army? No, I'm not. Personally, I'm not interested in it. I already have an army I'm working on that I'm very happy with. I mean, I might buy a kit or two just to paint and because they can be allies with my daughters, but like, I'm not the it's rules don't ever sell me. So no matter how good the rules were, I have to love the aesthetic of an army or I'm not interested. I and, agree with you wholeheartedly on that. So you're, you're not going to convert a bunch of witch elves to have no eyes and stick them on top of that giant turtle. No, because it's not sexy. And I'm in for the sexy with this army, my friend. That's why I'm doing it. Gotcha. So, just officially, sea turtles, not sexy. 
Yeah, that's that's official. You heard it here first. I think anything with a shell, it's pretty safe to say that that that's true. Mm -hmm. I want to see someone convert that thing into a giant like bestiodon. What is it with you and turning everything into lizard men? Stop it! Stop it! Because they're <laughs> awesome. You are like you and Paul. Paul's the other one who like everything can become a goblin. You turn everything into lizard men. Well, hold on, hold on. I've got a project that I've so, got sitting in the wings that'll make you feel better. Hold on. <laughs> Just let him so explore. I definitely am not buying the army. I'm definitely not buying the army. That said, I may buy an Iden F. I may buy a uh, an idol on. Here like you the go. Melee right. I I because he can ally into the daughters. Yep. This is just for you, Vince. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, that's a great kit. Oh, that's awesome. So just to make you feel better, she's not a lizard. Although I'm not going to lie, I was tempted to make like another giant skink priestess. But... I'm glad that you resisted that urge to ruin that wonderful Kantaro sculpt. <laughs> <laughs> so who is in it on this army? Is there anyone on this that's planning on buying in right away? Nope. I'm definitely uh, I've been trying to hide the fact that they're coming out from my wife because she really likes the whole like sea and fish thing. So like this so. army is totally right up her alley, but that's actually where I'm sort of leading too, is that this looks like an army that is friendly for female players to uh, want to get engaged with. You know, I I know in a previous episode, Vince, yeah. you had done a conversation about uh, the Sylvaneth army having a lot of appeal from an artistic standpoint, from a aesthetic standpoint, and that it, it, it tends to be popular with female gamers because there's no sexist elements in it. This looks like another army that hopefully will grow how many women are willing to play the game because, you know. I can uh, agree with that. that. This is an army that I'm going to show my daughter once it's fully out. And Actually, my wife is I, already... I, I'm not buying into this army because my wife is probably buying into this army. Sure. Um, I I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen any research on that. It was funny because Tom made that bold claim that like every... That like so many spouses, is female spouses, first armies were Sylvaneth. And I was like, I don't know, man. That seems like a pretty wide call. I feel like you're... That, that, that feels almost sexist. And then like in the comments afterward, it was just like... Nope, I'm a girl. My first army was Sylvaneth. Just like down the line. I was like, okay, well, <laughs> there must be some truth to it. Uh, well, I mean, and my wife obviously responded to it as well. What I would say is that uh, she also, like, I knew it would be the case. And when I mentioned this one, showed it to her. She's like, yeah, I like it. And But she's not interested in playing or anything. And But it's so much so that when we were talking about this, she just came down the basement. And she's like, what are you guys talking about? Those Ideneth? And so, like, clearly, like, it made a mark to the yeah. to the point where she knew what that her name was. Right. Well, yeah, that's crazy. You know, I think that is interesting because I, I talked to my wife in detail about why she got interested since she recently started model building. Why did she get interested in the things that she's interested in? She bought a Malignant's box and uh, Sylvanath boxes, and now she wants this army. And in her case, the aesthetic had to do with how things flow. They move in a circular motion. There's a very artistic element put into these models. And, uh, you know, aside from trying to make a, any kind of a sexless generalization, I think there is something to the really flowing ethereal look that makes this appealing on a broader level than just witch elves. Oh, don't get me wrong. My wife loves murder women. Yeah, I don't know. Hard to say exactly what would be more popular, but I, I think this will be an army. Here's what I'll say. Regardless of gender, I think this is an army that, that on balance is a win for the game as a whole because it's the kind of army people would fall in love with and, and would tilt them to jump in. It'll be a Marmite-style army. There will be some that yeah. hate it, some that love it, and that doesn't matter. It's the ones that love it. That's what matters. Yep. Yeah. Well, and I think we were talking earlier about uh, moving away from Tolkien fantasy, and here we have a little bit of a variant. 
And I think that's going to have a lot of appeal for people as well. Yeah, yeah. that I think is very true as well. I think the uh, I think to a certain extent, a lot of people are kind of tired of the Tolkien aesthetic. aesthetic. And when things are fantasy and deviate from that, it grabs a lot of attention. Well, the nice part is it moves in cycles, so we can just bring it all back. The mortal realms are big enough that when Tolkienish fantasy cycles back around in five years, ten years, like when the Lord of the Rings show comes out on HBO in three or five years, Amazon or, or whatever, Amazon, yeah, because they're going to spend like two billion dollars on it or some nonsense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, when that comes around. There can be a corner of the mortal realms that just like they release an army that's like the most classic Warhammer fantasy looking army ever, right? Like this, that still fits within this world. Why right? Like, you know, Malal to actually regenerate some of the energy. They're already doing that, bringing back the old metal models with the characters that'll be coming back. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like instantly they could just like there could be they could have a whole new range of pantaloon dudes, right? like. <laughs> It could just be Pantaloon City because there's some city state that has, you know, that looks like a feudal state and it's all Pantaloon dudes and that could be the army. And they could they could still put a little unique twist on it in some way, but it could be mostly looking like sort of Germanic medieval fantasy that's traditional. And that can sit in those realms. There's no, no reason it can't, right? I, well, I think you're right. What's well, that? I am all in for more Pantaloons. Pantaloons and feathers. Yep. I'll bring it back. Somebody drink all my beer. That's a, that's a hard pass for me on the pantaloons. Hard pass. But, uh, you know, hey, I know some people love them, so whatever. Like what you like. I, I will also pass on the pantaloons, but uh, as far as the concept of bringing back old armies go, I think one of the things I'm finding exciting about Age of Sigmar is the fact that we have an evolving world. And there are opportunities for new races. There are opportunities to rebuild old alliances and uh, it's, it's kind of more exciting now yeah i mean th yes this is an infinite palette we cannot fill in all the corners of this map so you know th there is officially no end to it other than what the you know the rules can sustain like eventually there th it collapses under its own weight but beyond that that's still a ways off you know what would be great is we had um, oh who was it the dwarf that came kind of like waltzing out of the chaos warp. You talking about Go Trek? Yeah. Uh, the Slayer. Yep. So now we have the evidence of. Somebody went into the chaos warp in the old world and popped back out in Age of Sigmar. Yeah, so obviously the, your next story is Cetra comes back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course he's going to come back. Yeah. Like, everybody who's like, wants to talk about Tomb Kings, like, it's just a matter of time. Like, they left that hook out there. In some number of years, they'll figure out some way to do something interesting and something different with Tomb Kings. That kind of aesthetic. It won't be the Tomb Kings army. Just like Fire Slayers weren't an army of slayers or whatever, but it'll be something in that same vein, and you'll feel it, and it'll led by Set B, by Setra the truly imperishable, the unbowed, the returned from the waste, and he'll add 10 more titles to his name, and we'll rock on. And that's fine. Like, I can't wait. It'll happen sometime. Yep. It's out there just waiting to happen. Yep, exactly. It wants to happen. It's calling us. Sure. Well, there's a reason why I'm holding on to my uh, Kalida model because I want to use that and I'm waiting for that day to happen. So yes, all the all good ideas, good ideas never die. They just, you know, go away for a little while. Yeah. We live in a we live in a nostalgia fueled society. Eventually that good idea will come back around. Yep. And I feel like Cetra as like it, a character in general is just like like people just want him back. Mainly because he's awesome. Yeah, oh, he's awesome and he knows he's awesome. 
Well, he should come he, back and like join something that isn't death. He should come back and, as I've said before, he should come back and join up with order. Yeah. He'll be like so pissed at Nagash that he abandoned the death thing. Well, he's always been order esque. True. I mean, he's in the old been, rules, that's the same thing. question. What is the what is the overriding purpose of order and like is it the definition of what it means to be order? We've talked about how build civilizations, civilization builders. That's who is order. Guess what? Tomb kings are a civilization. <laughs> that was the whole point. Even more than Nagash and death, Nagash just wants to have an undying kingdom bowing to his will. That's not what Setra built. He had <laughs> kings and vassals, and like his wasn't. Un, like they all had their own mind and will and stuff like that. That's never what Nagash wanted, but it was what Setra wanted. Yep. He he wanted people to bow to him willingly. Yes. Yep. And uh, you know, like he he makes great sense in order to me because he is like one of the most ordered of dudes. In addition to the civilization thing, like there's nobody who you know, in the old armies, uh, if you look, go back and look at your Warhammer 8th edition fantasy book, Tomb Kings weren't an evil army. No, it seemed like they were begrudgingly part of the undead army. Not, well, they were in the neutral. Flying in. Yeah, there was two right. neutral armies, them and ogres, which is hilarious. Yeah, because ogres just wanted to eat. Correct. <laughs> I realize I'm opening up another can of worms here, but weren't the lizard men neutral as well? Oh, no, maybe they so. were. Oh, oh no, they, they were officially good. No, they were good. Yeah, they, they were totally always good. They, order. they were the first order. Yep. Yeah, they had a purpose from the beginning, which was to defeat chaos. They yeah. just failed. Yeah, they were just bad at it. No, their their first they were before chaos. They were in the world way before that whole shtick thing happened. Their job before that was to take out the races that the old ones deemed unnecessary and not, not a part of the great plan in yeah, the world. That was. They, they failed at that too. Right. Yeah, that is so they, they, they succeeded at that. Where they failed was when the high elves showed up, they taught them magic, and then you high elf assholes opened a vortex <laughs> to the fucking realm of chaos and we I couldn't close it. <laughs> Yeah, we closed it, kind of. We stuck a big mage in there. Yeah. And we're like, hey, we try right here. I, I think it's that aspect that they were, you know, they had that higher purpose irrelevant to what our other races might have been doing other than chaos that made me think they were neutral. Yeah. So there you go. Yep. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Just, you know, we give it its its time and good ideas will come back around. We don't need everything right now. I don't want everything right now. If I had everything right now, I would have nothing else to look forward to in the future. Also that whole debt thing again, too. Mm hmm. Look, I waited 20 years for for Plastic Sisters of Battle. OK, I've got I'm a patient person. How about new units of Sisters of Battle? Not just plastic. Let's do something with the army. There will be new units. There will oh, be new man. units. They're not making the army just to redo everything. That's not a money maker. Oh, if they're going to do this, they're going in. Yeah, that's like a license to print money right there. People have been mm -hmm. asking for Plastic Sisters for forever. I've played the Sisters since they came out, and I yeah. just want them to be their own sustainable army without really needing other allies. Uh, that's it. Once the sisters come out and the new orcs come out, that's all we're allowed to play. <laughs> yeah, that kind of scares me because there's probably some truth to that. Mm -hmm. All of our current zeal for Age of Sigmar will suddenly change. Eh, maybe not. Uh, Paul, James is asking you for an invite. Lone Star James. Ah. Aha. I will have to uh, send him an invite. I did not realize he was around. Yeah. I just saw him pop up in the chat. So I uh, finally got this uh, Swift, Hawk, a a Swift Hawk Agents Army bundle ready to go on eBay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to come out. <laughs> you don't think they're going to come out with a fully uh, 
fully put oh. out line? They might. They might, but I'm not going to wait for it. So. Oh, yeah. You've that, made it. That's you kind of segue to call. You, my next thought is, do we have any idea what like the next release for AOS is going to be after the Deepkin? No, uh, we know something death is coming. Um, the you know the rumor right now is that we have a death Stormcast box coming this summer. You'd probably expect to have new models from both lines in there, previewing two future books. Um, I would guess that we probably have a Night Haunt build out, um, and because Night Haunt it was woefully unre underrepresented Legions of Nagash. This also gives them. Um, this is also a faction that could easily like buck against Nagash as well. Yeah. Um, and so it could be just a semi independent. They could be doing their own thing. They could revolt, you know, they, you could get into like possession and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like pretty easily you could slip into that space. That'd be a crazy mechanic possession. Huh. Yep. yep. So yeah, you could easily slip into that space. Um, you could, uh, and then, so that so you'll have something like that probably, and it lets them like renew the black coach or reimagine what that looks like. And that's what's the hints of what we had at uh, in the images from the video at the Depticon. And then likely we'll have a new Stormcast. I don't know if it'll be the Ruination Chamber or if I were a betting man, even though everybody thinks it's the Ruination Chamber, I might think of the Sacrosanct Chamber, which is like the priests. Uh, the the priest, rumor, priest. if you translate the thing in the book. Spoiler, it's yeah. a completely different chamber. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a previously un unknown chamber. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, the Sacrosanct mm -hmm. would be an obvious, uh, if you're talking ghosts and possession, having like the priest-oriented chamber would be the way to go. Sure. Welcome, sure. James. Yeah, the, 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 the text in the book for the spoiler was like a just uh, a here to uh, previously unnamed chamber. So. Sure. I think if um, that uh, that would be a crazy, like, awesome twist of events to have, like, the whole malign portents thing going on and then just have, like, the Knight of Shrouds turn on the gash and be like, no, nah, man, doing my own thing. I got yeah, I mean, and I it wouldn't, uh, like, it would, yeah, it'd be interesting. Um, well, theoretically, ghosts would would be neutral. I mean, there's, there's a lot of cases that you could make that, that they would. Uh, if we're looking for another army that could go against a gash and be somewhat neutral, there's there's a possibility right there. They're not controlled. They're not from one particular race. They don't necessarily have an agenda. I'd like to see that. That could be the new free guild faction, too, the Ghostbusters. I like that. Where are you going? There and you go. that's ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I hope that all tracks. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, yes, to a point, like, new Stormcast, likely new death, and don't forget the new magic stuff is coming. Like, we're going to upend the magic system, certainly, in some big way here, yeah. because that's where yeah, that, gonna you're going to get your new, uh, you're going to get your new living spell thing, and I'm sure that's not the only one. It's not like we're just going to get a purple sun of Xerxes. Ugh. Yeah. I hope this isn't another storm of magic thing. You know, I have a good feeling about the purple sun. I not want to see that come back. Uh, I mean, you know, it, lots of previously horrible spells <laughs> have perfectly fine incarnations now, yeah. you know, like, uh, I mean, caco bomb anybody like, you know, that's a pretty garbage spell now. So, you know, just naming something the same doesn't equal, uh, terror. Right. Depends on your experiences, I guess. <laughs> Uh, well, I have a lot of experience with caco bombing people, and let me tell you what, it's much more depressing now. So, uh, but, you know, I mean, whatever, like, the there's going to be a big change in the magic. That's what it boils down to. Like, if they're making models for living spells, something's going to get real weird real fast with magic. Yep. I thought that that new living magic looked more like a sea urchin than a sun myself. <laughs> <laughs> it did kind of look like the purple sea urchin of Xerxes. Yes, I, I don't disagree with that, James. So I'd just like to take this opportunity since we have officially announced that finally, at long last, my channel has more subscribers than his does. 
and all it took was him disappearing for six months, <laughs> not posting any content. Well, congratulations. So, anyways, yes, I mean, there's a lot of big stuff. What I thought was really interesting was, um, so Max <laughs> is the one who painted the idol on, okay? Mm -hmm. Um. And he's a fantastic painter. He shared yeah. that he was yep. the one who painted it today. And, you know, basically in the post, he said, um, I also thought it was interesting because somebody asked him, how long did you work on this model? And he said that he was, he was scheduled for 25 days. Wow. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> At the top end for that, they must, they actually give those guys a fair amount of time. I did not think they gave that, like, I mean, obviously, Max is not one of the army painters. He's on like the, you know, one of the heads of the heavy metal crew or whatever. But there's a distinction there. But still, geez, that's a lot of time. Good on him. Um, but he said that like, and, you know, he said he painted that a year ago. Okay. Wow. Hmm. Shows you the lead time they're working on. Yep. Yeah. That's and he's like, I am so excited for what you guys are going to see over the next 18 months. It has been some of the most fun stuff I've ever painted. Goblins. Goblins are coming. I hope I hope Moon Clan gets reimagined. Yep. Wigs everywhere. Yep. Well, I mean, if it was reimagined, it wouldn't be squigs everywhere. Why not? No, There's no. the new super squigs. Yeah. yeah. It'll be They're squiggy squigs. It'll be squigs wearing the mushrooms on their heads instead of on the goblins' heads. <laughs> Maybe. I or or whatever, lost. like yeah, we already saw the little pseudo reimagined squig there once. Like it's easy enough to imagine that we do that again. Anyone else getting tired of GW giving us everything we want? Just tired of it. It's pretty annoying. It's ridiculous. <laughs> well, it's yeah, funny I, because you mentioned that they had a year's uh, time. That's the Matt, that's the painter right. being a year out. Right. <laughs> And it's he clearly referenced he's painting stuff that we won't see for 18 months. Which is great because there's a lot of people that I know in my local area that are thinking that now, oh, they're moving too fast. They're not playtesting enough. And I don't think that the criticism really bears out when you hear things like that and when you see how efficiently the game is working. I think they're moving at a really welcome pace. Yeah. Well, what do you think comes first? lore models and then rules or do you think they do the rules and then model and then try to fit lore in i don't think model. i know the <laughs> first the artists and sculptors create a bunch of stuff and then take it to the rules people yep take it to the book people and uh, the sort of broader decision makers who then decide how they can build that into a product not everything that gets sculpted or arted necessarily moves forward but nothing that doesn't get sculpted first, right? It doesn't go the other direction. The artists and the never sculpt. concept an idea and send it to artists. It's right. all coming from the art, and you know the the artists are controlling that ship. That is a fantastic way of doing things. Yep. It really is. Well, I mean, it is the studio. It's but quite it's possible make... to come up with lore and then find out it's not supported, uh, and then you you know you just can't you can't build the miniatures for it. Now I'm sure there's just lost a lot of time, so I, I think that's a great way to do it. Sure. Now I'm sure there's I, I I don't I'm not sure I'm also sure there's somewhat like overall situational direction. Like for example, there's leadership who says we would really really love to see a human faction in the next twelve months. You understand what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Like they'll they'll give directives like that and those kind of things, but I mean you know what what that means is. Well, then the artists say, okay, if you make me do one more human army, it's going to have pantaloons. <laughs> Everybody likes to rag on the pantaloons. <laughs> They've served me well. Poor taste. Because they're dumb and look dumb. And it would be, and to me, it's like modeling an entire army who is in like 80s fashion. <laughs> like this weird random thing in history that was worn and is ugly and yet we decided to just like stick in it it'd be like if every army came out and they all had like big hair and massive shoulder pads uh that would be awesome uh parachute pants with zippers i think that would be great uh -huh. yeah 
made me think of those old school workout videos where everyone had the leg warmers and the head. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. You, you're, you got it, James. That's you're, you're in exactly my headspace here, buddy. <laughs> That's the army we need and want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and deserve. You I was about to ask John that. Army? The Xanadu Army? Exactly. <laughs> Body works. That's a new, new branch of Slanesh. Uh, I, for one, am very excited about the uh, the Leather Daddy Slanesh Army that's coming. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, as if all of the fish puns were not enough. Oh, get oh, ready, my friend! Oh, I love all the the BDSM puns. Leather Daddy jokes with Slanesh are going to be off the charts. I, for one, can't wait. I didn't think they could go a direction with Slanesh that I wasn't going to. That I wasn't expecting, and then I read that story, and I was like, "I, I see you, I see you," <laughs> <clears throat> and I'm all about it. Bunch of ripped, shirtless dudes in leather. Let's do this. I'm just picturing like reavers with whips, warlocks. That's it. Just a bunch of meat slabs rolling across the battlefield, riding like some kind of weird ant eater monster. Fantastic. <laughs> Sounds like the old heavy metal movie. Mm, yeah, yep. correct. You oh, got it. Bernie Wright yeah. said. And let's hope it has the soundtrack to match. It is, in fact, a one way ticket to midnight. <laughs> when I, you know, I played Battletech for a long time, and we used to like just. That was the soundtrack. Like as we were playing BattleTech, we would just rock the entire heavy metal soundtrack on repeat. What do you mean used to? I mean, I don't play BattleTech anymore. I like. I, you still uh, use the soundtrack? Oh, absolutely. Well, I say that, but I'm actually in two weeks from now going to do a big Mech Warrior marathon. So I guess I do still kind of play the game. So there you go. Yep. Uh. How come? When's the next event that people will be wearing "There You Go" shirts? Just saw the uh, "Let's Be Clear" shirts. <laughs> uh, They'll be available which, for purchase soon. Yeah, which, by the way, was like that is maybe one of my favorite moments in the history of my entire twenty years of war gaming. Is when I came down Saturday morning and. Brad and Andrea and Jake and Sean all had their "Let Me Be Clear" T-shirts on. That was pretty wonderful. <laughs> I, I could just imagine when I uh, that killed me when I saw it. I loved it, mm-hmm. loved it. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> oh, shut up! You know you loved it. Don't play. My wife's even sitting there across the room, going, "You loved it." <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because she knows. All that was was like, let's stroke Tom's ego. Like that was abs- you were absolutely in for that. Don't try to play like you're, like you're you weren't anything else but overjoyed by that. <laughs> uh, it was quite humorous. Yes. Now the question is, Tom, how often do you use that phrase for things that are not Warhammer related? Yeah. So it's so That's funny that you your wife it. wants to kill you for. No, like yeah, my <laughs> wife obviously hears it, but like. Not as much my wife, because it's more of like a teaching lecturing thing. I, I can that's exactly where I imagined it too. <laughs> yeah, and so uh I am so hyper conscious of it now in front of my classroom um <laughs> when I'm lecturing. And I'm like, Oh no, here it is. Luckily they know they don't know that there are t shirts. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if like all your students came into your class all wearing that t shirt one day? <laughs> Can I uh, can I maybe get just like one of your students' uh, names or addresses on Facebook, Tom? Absolutely not. <laughs> Tom, I think you're remiss in not handing out those T-shirts for your class. <laughs> yep, totally agree. <laughs> so it's not the first time. Like so. Now that said, I mean I have had uh, a class. Let's be clear. So, uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've, I have had a class show up with T-shirts that said, um, "Now that's a great question," um, because like when I interact with the class, like I try to affirm that, and so they would hear me say, "That's a great question," uh, quite a bit, and they uh, made T-shirts out of it. <laughs> that's 
So, so it's exactly. not the first time that T-shirts have been made with quotes from myself on it. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's actually the one you were just talking about. The that's a great question. It's actually a really good like line to use in a classroom because you're actually asserting the students to like ask more questions. Yep. They yes agreed. Hey, speaking of which, I saw the design for our for our T-shirts. I know. That, that's why I say, like, I was joking around about, like, oh, the, the, yeah, they'll be available on the market soon. Yep. I mean, not really, but not those t-shirts. Sure. Not specifically those t-shirts. That's exactly right. The ones that have the Nurgling and the Little Lord to change on? Yeah, correct. Awesome. Yep. That will make a fine t-shirt. I mean, not really, but if people want to wear our little avatars, that's fine. I mean, look, it will only, not because of anything from us, but because of Eric's great work. I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Indeed. It has nothing to do with us and everything to do with how freaking amazing Eric knocked that out of the park. I mean, Stone Monk killed it, dude. Yeah. Really did. Like, how much work did he just earn himself by doing that? I love how he made the, like, the Nurgling like Tom just by putting like the hair well, on its head. Like we, you could tell it was you. We had some conversations about that. <laughs> yeah, like that. And no, it Yeah, like the they're amazing caricatures that are rooted in what those units actually are. He did fantastic. Yep. yep. Yeah. I love him. The the base of the Nurgling, at least, I wanted the uh, the one from Sloppity Bile Piper, like the singing, dancing. <laughs> nice. uh, he's the best. The very jovial you know, Nurgle demon. Mm -hmm. Yep. You didn't want the nightly one? No, no, no. Uh, I certainly have my own quests that I go on, but uh, no, I felt like this one, you know, it... it 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 was reminiscent of a, n a number of different aspects of my personality, uh, not the least of which is the slightly uh, um, the semi humorous, semi, uh, and then obviously the aesthetics of like being semi trollish in, in in look that uh, that that seems to fit some of my personality. Um, I don't know, man. I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of it. Mm -mm. This is all unfamiliar territory to me. I'm actually Weird. shocked with this new army book coming out. You haven't had any more arguments with Ben Johnson. <laughs> He's been good recently. Uh, I, I've i tried. Uh, and I just don't care. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can only have arguments if your interlocutor responds. <laughs> well, I will say that I mean, Tom, do you mind if I share the story from uh, from Adepticon? <laughs> sure. Well, this is going to be a good one. I'm locked in. He so, had to ask for permission. This is good. Hold on. Let me put this down. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to share with you one of my favorite moments from Adepticon history, which just happened this last year. Uh, so it was late at night, and Tom and I were out wandering, and uh, like I had just gotten back from teaching a class. Oh, this isn't the Ben Johnson thing. You're talking about the oh. uh, Foley one. Yeah, Foley. correct. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And so we're wandering around and we see, we come upon uh, Jimbo and Mitzi, Domus. Uh, who else was there? Was Tyler Chuck, sitting there? Chuck, Chuck, Tyler. Yeah. And then Pete was just hanging out there, right? So this is Pete Foley, who's the... A lot of the U.S. personalities and then Pete Foley, the head of uh, Big Box Games. Yeah. And so he was just hanging out there. And, you know, we, so we sidled up and people were. You guys all knew who Pete Foley is. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So He's we. Ben Johnson's boss. I don't think that's true. I think they're. Oh, really? I think they're equal level with each other. Yeah, they're both in charge oh, of right. stuff. Okay. I don't want to speak out of turn. Ben's going to kill you if you say somebody who's his manager isn't his manager. Um, so Wouldn't be the I'm first pretty, time. I'm pretty sure they're they're equal level, but I don't know. I don't know the inner workings there. I just know that the rules writers report up to Pete. So. Got it. 
Anyway, um, so <clears throat> he was just in there chilling. Everybody was having a drink. So we sat down. We're just chatting for a little while. And then um, Dave came up. So Dave, whose name I can never I remember, but it's Dave Demon Killer. But it's Dave who um, who wrote the who wrote Shadespire, the guy who created Shadespire. Yep. And I'm sorry, Dave, if you for some reason ever happen to watch this. I, <laughs> not that there's any chance of that, but um, but I, I apologize because I just cannot lock Dave's last my last Anders. name in my head. What is that? Anders, I'm pretty sure. Sure. So Dave comes up. And like I had talked to Dave last year, he had been at Nova. And so, you know, we had chatted some and, and he sat down and, or as he walked up, he didn't sit down yet. He walks up and Pete says, does everybody know Dave? Dave uh, designed Shadespire. And everybody was like, oh, yay, you know, because it's a freaking great game. Like Dave killed it, man. That's a, it was a heck of an accomplishment to build a new game that's taken and, off. And he's like probably a mid 20 something. Like he's a young guy. He's <laughs> got it. Yeah, I think he's like late 20s, early 30s. Yeah, at most, at most. Yeah. So, um, young dude wrote a great product, obviously a nice guy. And then Pete goes, so that everybody like claps or whatever. And so Pete is sitting to t imagine that I'm Pete for a moment. Okay. I'm going to, I'll lock the camera on me. So it stays here so we can all see us. So, so I'm Pete for the moment. Tom is right here. Tom is my hand. Okay. This is Tom. And the, and the, and the other guy is the opposite side. Right. And so this is, so Pete is sitting here. Tom's off to his left. They weren't actually this close in reality that they were like ready to make out, but for the purposes of our camera today. And uh, and Pete goes, yeah, he made Chase Fire break claps, blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, he also uh, he's also the one who wrote Caradron Overlords. <laughs> and he like slow, like looks over and then locks onto me. And, and this is what I've been thinking the whole time, because I know Dave wrote the KO book. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> he just gave him like the Stewie head lean in of like, you know, just like, what are you, you going to say anything? And so. And so, you know, Tom didn't say anything. And I, so I, my response was Dave, like, you know, I, you I, I tried to be classy about it. You were classy about it. I appreciate that. But I had to get my boys back. So, uh, so my response was Dave, you wrote a fantastic game. Shade Spire is amazing. You created a new pillar of GW's entire business model and something that will endure for a generation. And you also wrote KO. So, you know, you can't win them all. <laughs> <laughs> 50 50 500 still a hall of fame average man don't feel bad uh, yeah i don't know i feel like you're shortchanging the poor guy if you're calling those 50 50 i feel like shade spire is a bigger endeavor it, so at, least it give, is. at least give him 60 40 fair enough totally fair no dave's a good dude and uh, and and look, and it, I'll say this: the, the it's not Dave's fault right. that Ko ended up being what it was. Right. Like that book didn't fail in the rules writing process. Right. Like that's not where it stumbled. I don't say failed. That's not where it stumbled. Um, it stumbled in de development. Right. Like the, in the in the play testing is what I mean. Like mm -hmm. that's a play like, of catching. You know. You know, because the rules writer's job is to write a bunch of crazy rules and throw them at the wall and see what sticks. And yep. development should then step in and shoot holes in a bunch of that and to bring it <laughs> into something that's cleaner and tighter. And I actually think Dave did a great job writing a lot of really creative rules <coughs> with some tough stuff. Yeah. Right? Like, yep. there was nothing like ironclads before that in AOS. You know what I mean? And like these, these balloon boys and stuff like that. Like he came up with a, like when you talk about things that are just very creative in that army, he did a great job making up some really fun stuff. There were no transports. There was nothing like that. Right. Nope. nope. All new. Many command abilities from the ironclads and from the frigates. Yeah. He had a lot of space to cover. Like that's a, it was a heck of a challenge. And I, I you know, overall, obviously that book, I, I agree with Tom. It had it needed more development, right? As being what it was, that but was that was also out. right before they implemented their new systems as well, right? And like, let me uh, uh, let me be clear. Like, <laughs> what, the, the reality of that is that like they've already fixed this problem, right? You wouldn't like, see that happen again. Yeah, like this won't happen again because of the way that they've engaged playtesters, yep. and they not only have like they not only have a team of playtesters where there've been iterations, like Corn, for example. What, which came out like just before this actually had had the iterative process at least once of play play tester feedback 
and then um and then what came after that was uh nurgle and nurgle had two rounds of playtester feedback and everything from nurgle on has had two rounds of playtester feedback so where they like they send playtesters playtesters bounce it back they send the playtesters again the revised rules playtesters bounce it back and you can so, see the difference and you can see yeah. the difference like the quality is night and day i agree with that yeah like i uh, again they've already fixed this problem so i don't want to bust their chops like they're they're doing great work hopefully we'll see some uh the next general sandbox some some big changes for the ko because it i mean the focus should be the ships and i honestly when i build a, a, a list that i'm going to a tournament with i'm not taking any ships no i mean i'll take one yeah i'll take an ironclad and that's it well i'll just take something to reduce my drops yeah like uh, it's it it fills in the place of a battalion for me the battalions are not very good either for their points cost the answer is gun hauler battle line and a 20 point reduction boom yeah oh my god uh, not 20 point 40 point you can't have everything tom dude they they have one shot they have one attack at four one plus. four plus. look, look tom four plus. You only get one shot, okay? Do not miss your chance to to blow. I mean, as Eminem said. So, did you just, did you really just do that? Did you yeah. actually just say that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm a witness. Yeah. Vince does shit like that all the time. To be clear, I, I don't have a problem with Eminem. But, uh, you know. Sure. <laughs> Look, what I'm saying is, it's fine. Battle line is the thing that I want to see. I want to see him make a big ship like that. Battle line, I think that'd be awesome. So here, here's my, my question, Tom. Um, while Vince was telling his story, you were like, "Oh, that one." Yeah. So obviously there was a different situation that you were thinking about. What yeah. situation was that? <laughs> yeah. The time when Ben Johnson cursed you out upon first meeting you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow that just sounds like a sequel. <laughs> no, I have this, a this, this was his first encounter with me. He had said no other words to me other than, oh, I know you. And then really? the next line was that, yeah. Yes. And, and then just a stream of expletives about no, <laughs> no, it was no, good. Actually, it was good. No. I mean, this is what it was. We've told the story before. I'm sure we've told the story. Before. Was it nice expletives, like said in a smile? Yes, yes. He just said, he said, "Oh, I know you." And we stopped, and I shook his hand, and I said, uh, "And I'm trying to like remember, like again." I said, "No, a lot of the GW folk." He had his name tied on, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I know that name." And he's like, "Yeah, um, this isn't this last year. This is the year before." This so, is the yeah. year before. This, this is over a year ago. And he looked at me and said. Um, wow, you seem like such a, you know, you seem like a nice chap or a nice gentleman or whatever uh, in real life. Why are you such a douchebag online? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a valid question. Like, that is his opening line. Like, <laughs> that, like the head of the development team. Mm -hmm. Pull no punches, tell it like it is, I guess. I yeah, and, and I was like, okay, cool. I'm in this. And so we, we talked for another five minutes or so. Where I, you know, he, I push back and I just, you know, I mean, the reality is this, I, uh, uh, so I talked about the culture of the show that Vince and I do and how we want to make sure that all perspectives are represented on there. Uh, Vince often takes a very positive, like spin on everything. And so I counter, I, I, I will often counter them all out with the critiques that I've heard within the community. So I would just raise concerns of like other voices I've heard. So I will be that voice. I said, alternatively, if I ever say something positive, which I do quite a bit, even though people don't hear that, um, Vince will often respond by saying, you know, except, you know, it, this has been a critique or whatever. And so he will often push the other direction. That's how you keep good conversation going. Yep. Um, and you offer balanced perspectives on kind of the spectrum of, of the thing. Um, but he, I was just catching shit because I was being, you know, I'm often the negative voice in those conversations. And he was like, oh, so you're lying and that's not your actual perspective. And I'm like, no, that's not what this is. Like, I want to be like, it's journalism, friend. Um, <laughs> but, uh, well, no, I think it's a, it's a really good formula. And I think it's important that you do that because if you were 
always positive, you'd be accused of being a fanboy, and then people wouldn't give any any credence to what you had to say. So, uh, you're, also, you're also like audience analog to a certain extent too. Like you're you're expressing things that other people in the community are expressing. Yep. Yeah, my goal is to simply reflect the the discussion that I that that we are encountering out in the community so that that is yep. being heard you know that's being that range of response is being broadcast that's my goal somehow I sincerely doubt we'll ever get accused of being or as a show we'd ever get accused of being slavish yeah. fanboys yep. at least I, hope no, I, I don't yeah I don't think so either and I think that's a good thing I think it sounds like it's by design it's just an no intentional. person can love everything that the, the company or the hobby has to offer. There's always going to be some sort of a problem or a disagreement with direction or whatever the case may be. Of course. Like, for example, if there were to suddenly be some kind of weird change to the shooting rules so I couldn't target characters, which I don't think is ever going to come down the pipe, pike, whatever you want to call it. I don't think it's ever going to happen. But, but I know a lot of people would lose his mind. But I know a lot of people want it to happen, and it makes me angry every time I see somebody say it. Or losing the uh, the random roll for uh, eight, losing the random turn order. Yes, oh. that's another thing. That's they, like, they could do things that would set me off, certainly, but I don't think they have any intention of doing them, or at least I hope you not. You ever want to see Vince angry? Oh man, it would be it would be delightful. <laughs> <laughs> like he was gonna make a video about it. Vince angry. I'm I'm gonna spill the beans, Vince. He was gonna make a video about it, but he's like. I don't think I can because I think I would just get like it makes my blood boil. I think I would just get angry and shout at the camera. <laughs> yeah, Vince, you need to do that. That's what I've been telling him. I'm 100 percent with you on that one. I'd hate to see it go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've had far too much of Vince as like the softer side of Sears. We need a little edge. The softer side of Sears. <laughs> <laughs> Are you people like out to kill Vince off by raising his cortisol levels or something? <laughs> <laughs> I think no. it's more like they're saying that there is some artistic merit in watching somebody scream on YouTube for two hours. I mean, oh, no, just a good fifteen minute rant from Vince would be great. Yeah, I wouldn't do I it as screaming. If I did it, I would do it in a standard way, which would be, you know, productive. Yeah, a very logical, dismissive argument. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I've always, like, my two, like, go-to things for a very long time when it comes to videos on YouTube that, like, I'll sit and listen to on, while I'm painting or doing whatever, it'll be, it's always been, like, Vince's, like, talks, like, topic of the weeks, things like that, and Anthony's rants. So if I could take, like, those two things <laughs> and mash them together... That would be like the perfect combination. It'd be glorious, wouldn't it? It would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we know the reason why ants rants, sat, uh, you know, like really intrigue you, is because you don't ever see that in Canada. Nobody is impolite enough to rant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You are just in general not exposed to the state of New Jersey. <laughs> Yo. Welcome back, sir. The fun. My God, this is a big party tonight. I know it's pretty. It's fun. No, this is the worst sausage fest. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I, I did hear that's how you Americans like it. Uh, sausage fest. You know, on a sausage party. <laughs> I mean, I am a huge fan of sausage. <laughs> Adeline, There's, um, where is it? There we go. Can you guys see that? Yes, that is your gravesite, I assume. That's one of four. Okay. I'm getting there. There's another one. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. okay. And then there's just a plain, basic one. Okay. Sure. So this but, is um, you actually getting back to hobbying now that you yeah. are uh, no longer on the Ozhan. Yeah, I've actually got time to do my own hobby. So, like, I've almost finished off 2,000 points of death in, in the two weeks that I've... See, that's your off. problem, is that you just... You, you would actually care about your contribution on the channel and on the show. I just don't, and it lets me get work done. 
<laughs> yeah, but see, you're lucky because you've got yeah. Vince there to take up your slack. So, oh, no, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but um, this stuff here. Yeah, I feel like Bradley was Tehran not taking up the slack in that situation. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually got around to watching the last episode um, that they put out, and um, the the man inside me cried a single tear, like that Indian that sees that rubbish on the ground. <laughs> it was like that. Um, so for last week's and all future episodes, I, I apologize, guys. There's, there's going to be a lot of no longer your lot of 40k anymore. there. I'm pretty sure Brindley was like, "Oh my god, free pass! I'm doing all 30k." So <laughs> it's it's <laughs> not it's no longer your burden, friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and crack me up. Um, Michael from Doom and Darkness commented on the last video, and all it said was. Rip Ozhammer. I thought, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. Anyway. I, I, best of will. Best of I have to admit, I didn't watch the last episode because you weren't in it. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> there was some dude on there. It was actually, it was, I, I got asked to watch it because I didn't have time to watch it either. But um, there was some dude on there called Mark something or other. And, um, he just went to town on them, and it wasn't fun to watch. There's some pretty, um, there's some some people in the hobby get pretty angry pretty easily these days over stuff. Weird. So, yeah, he was like, "You guys are screwed. You know, you guys can't even share a screen properly without him. How are you going to put your socks on or something?" I don't know. <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, "Dude, calm down. It's a bunch of guys talking to their cameras. Like, what do you want?" Yeah. Yeah, it's not like know, professional like Warhammer Weekly. Yeah, <laughs> that's how we roll. Yeah, I mean, pro every time. Amateur is like say is like yeah. a compliment. Yeah, well, I just I just figured Warhammer Weekly. You know, your your ceiling was our floor, and that's how we work, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yep. I mean, I accept. Like that's totally fair. Sounds about right. We deliver um, consistency. I have made no further promises of quality. Hey, dude, I'm already sitting here ready and waiting to make a, a bloody apron order. So you just say the word, my friend, and I am all over that. Uh, yeah. I'm well, waiting on the. I'm waiting on it right now. It's it's in process. Like the yes. the first sample is in process that I'm I'm waiting on it to get finished. So yes. I've already I'm seen gonna... the T-shirt and. Uh, something else so there you go i'm gonna get two the second one's gonna be um i don't know if anyone here is old enough to remember the original spawn movie but it's gonna be like that yeah. cover where it's just his face in the shadows except i'm gonna use a profile photo of paul conti instead of spawn <laughs> and that was all the name out uh, Old enough to remember Spawn. Yeah, when I was in my twenties. Yeah, I do remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey man, I don't I don't know anymore. I've learned I've I've learned not to assume on the internet. <laughs> well, I think if people like, laughed yeah, at yeah. the laughed at your joke about the crying Indian, we probably actually saw the spoon. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Sure. Well, no, see, <laughs> then they get to that seventies <laughs> commercial reference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but younger. Well that could be just well. reaching Australia. <laughs> no, well, not, yeah, well, there is that, but no, they um they recreated that on a Simpsons episode. So anybody over the age of twenty five has probably seen it. Too. Yeah, fair enough. But you know what? The internet is just a place where you don't assume things anymore. I mean, I'm definitely not assuming anybody's age if I can't assume their gender. So, uh... <laughs> oh, mate, you can assume my gender all you like. You'll never guess. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I, I, cause I, the way society is now, I don't even know what my gender is anymore. <laughs> So I, I, I don't know. Kangaroo. I'm an I'm an I don't know it. <laughs> you are clearly oh kangaroo kin. Yes. <laughs> clearly. Now there's an army I could get behind. <laughs> In more ways than one. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, if 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 the, if the Welsh don't get their sheep army, I don't get my kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, to be fair. A kangaroo arm, army would have a captain kangaroo. And that, right. To be yeah, it would be one. Skippy. Does he get boxing gloves? <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's yeah, not... Yeah. The boxing <laughs> actually gloves that, are yeah. not for the kangaroo. They are for the victim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you actually... Um, if you hit a kangaroo, like a fully grown red kangaroo, it's... The equivalent, and it's only half the size of one, but it's the equivalent to hitting a fully grown cow. 
Oh crap! Yeah, like they're they're absolutely solid, and um, the more you scary. know. <laughs> yeah, they're, they'll write yeah. off your car straight away. It's like, yeah, the insurance company, if you tell them you hit a kangaroo, they're just like, yeah, we'll just pay it out. That's not getting fixed. So. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I'm going to tell you, I have a lot of experience with cows. I don't want to know. The, the <laughs> town no, when we first <laughs> You know, the comment section is blowing up right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're all um, angry cows that he didn't call back. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he just gave me the wrong number. That's right. Yeah, but yeah the, the town I grew up in had more cows than people. So... Um, yeah, I've got a lot of experience with cows. I definitely like was driving home at like four o'clock in the morning from a party one night. You're and... still not helping your case for the night. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. It's <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. His case is going to be what is the most alluring type of cow, and then this makes sense. You know, I like ones with 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 nice big udders. Yeah, <laughs> that's and my you type. Lie? Just saying, your story didn't start out all that well. It was like more cows than people. I was driving home at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it was it was quiet. I was lonely. <laughs> Dude, my wife is even in the background ripping on you now. <laughs> <laughs> but to, to be fair, that's probably that's a, a welcome reprieve for Tom, who's, who's not copying it now. So, well, no, no, we do have to hear the story out. No, yeah, no, didn't. no. Well, we want to hear what happened at four in the morning with the cows. Yeah, <laughs> yourself we, were drunk, we were wearing sunglasses and there were cows. Uh, Go yeah. On. I, all, I, all I'm saying was I was driving by, you know, the cow farm that I have to go by uh, to get back to my parents' house. And um, there were just cows in the middle of the road. Like dozens of them for no reason whatsoever. I look off in the distance. <laughs> I looked off in the distance. It's somebody had driven off the road and plowed through the fence on the cow pasture. So like, like all of these cows had just wandered into the road because some drunk asshole had taken out the fence. And like he wasn't even in the car anymore. He beat feet out of there because I assume he had to no. be drunk. What, did you come upon this, or did you wake up to this? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I arrived <laughs> upon this uh, at like four o'clock on in the morning on the way back from a rave. Um, right. All right. So this is getting this better. Is not getting any better. You food. were drunk. We go into the you story. drove through the fence. You plowed some cows, and then what happened? <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I called the police, and I was like, what the fuck do I do? Because <laughs> we're in the road. And I didn't want to, like, blow the horn and have them charge me. You know, those things are huge. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Too it. Easy. <laughs> Too easy. <laughs> <laughs> and when you called the cops, did they say, what you do is invite us? <laughs> well, I mean, you know. Let's just say they were very interested in my phone call. <laughs> uh, Maybe recording this for various reasons. Speak louder into the microphone, please, Paul. <laughs> but whisper at the same time. <laughs> no, really. So anyway, so um, the last bit of your story was just the tip. Yep. You say what? just the tip? He, that right, was right. the last thing I heard Paul say. Was just the tip. <laughs> I, yeah. You guys didn't I mean, hear that? It seemed like it they were yeah, yeah, just the tip. I think this story just writes itself. <laughs> no. It's funny. I was just joking with my wife earlier today because we went to visit my parents today uh, for my mom's birthday, and we had to drive through, you know, like all of the cow nonsense um to get there and my wife's like how the hell did you grow up with this this entire town smells like cow shit um and yeah it's absolutely true like did you look at her and say are you as turned on as i am right now <laughs> to, to i mean mother. i had a massive <laughs> uh, um, 
But yeah, like our <laughs> high school was like right next to a cow field. So uh, in the, so you in, like, the young. summer months when like, <laughs> the, uh, the sun beat down on all that cow shit and just like the wind just had like a nice breeze right into math class. You had everybody like gagging, barely able to breathe, let alone learn anything. It was great. It's the worst, the worst porn story ever. <laughs> like, I've no, actually, no, 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 I've, let I've, him I've go. lost let him go. It's still okay. It's still okay. Who are you to do it? You have kangaroos. <laughs> <laughs> and let's be real, he's originally from New Zealand, so there's a lot of sheep action going on there. It's, it's more, more of a sheep thing. I'm more of a sheep guy than a kangaroo guy. Yeah. I feel like I feel like the 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 part that we're missing is you know, Paul gave the example that all this happened during math class that explains why his math hammer videos are so bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> snap! <laughs> but um, bum. So how about all those videos so, you've been uh, doing up, James? Hey, how, how have those been going for you? <laughs> that, uh, no, that no, 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 don't deflect. <laughs> no deflecting. <laughs> Hey Paul, classic deflection. Tell me, about, uh, tell me about how many soul grinders you've seen on top tables recently. I uh, uh, I have since sold my soul grinder. <laughs> and how have many phoenixes have you seen on top tables recently? Uh, what? But how many phoenixes have we seen on top tables recently? Uh, I mean, like one British dude. <laughs> uh, most of the mixed order lists, lists in fact. <laughs> Yeah, there's so, a couple up there at Adepticon, too. Oh, I just want to see Deepkin and Free Guild together in some mixed alliance, um, mixed freaking order th list for some reason. Why? I don't know. I can't help it. I'm sorry. No, I know why. I know why. It's because that new stupid movie about like the lady falling in love with that merman really touched his heart, and he wants to see it on the table. <laughs> okay. You, you know, compared, compared to the cow story, that actually is romantic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's glad to, I'm, gl I'm glad you guys got my back there. And, and, and Paul, um, I, I just, I really hope, you know, there is a cow for you out there somewhere. Just keep trying. You know, really, there's enough of them that there's always a cow out there for any of us. <laughs> Is this where you like take the like warm apple pie thing and change it to like warm T bone steak or <laughs> I mean it says it says it says a lot about you. I, I judge I judge all Americans off the story of one. Like that's that's how we do it, yeah. So the the problem is you, it's like you we all judge wrong. all New Zealanders about the stories about how uh, a sheep is the closest facsimile to a human in the animal kingdom. Well, they I have actually, hobbits. They also have hobbits was, in New Zealand. I thought that was a pig, but um, but you know, we did invent the uh, Velcro gloves. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> Don't fall off the cliff. I'm 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 really glad that we're producing some brilliant content here tonight, lads. I, I, you insightful. and everyone on the internet. Thank you for your contribution to the community, all of you. <laughs> he says you're, he you're really Fortnite. digging deep and doing the hard journalism on which animal's vagina is most like a human's. Oh no, we just heard about how you were digging deep, but the rest of us here are still straight as an arrow, buddy. <laughs> all right, I, we're not all tarred with that brush. Yeah, well, mine's, uh, mine's on, more on that note, I'm uh, I'm gonna go to bed. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good yeah. Night. see what you've yeah. got, Paul. He's got a box of tissues waiting for him after all this talk of sheep. <laughs> oh, and his Velcro gloves. The the, oh. um, the, no, the real reason is screaming right now. The real reason is that Maroc, again being Canadian, can't take part in this conversation, so he feels left out. Oh, he's too no, proud. it's because Tim Hortons is having a sale. He's oh. a <laughs> yeah, and he and he read the friendly message about Jesus on his coffee cup, and you he guys turned away from Beast All right, <laughs> I love you guys too. Good night. <laughs> uh, all that, and it's still a sausage party, fest party, whatever. <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm seriously, I, I can't, um, I can't decide whether or not I do buy, like, get the deepkin, or whether I just hold off for this um, Warhammer Champions thing. I think I should only do one. What Warhammer Champions what, thing? Card game? 
Oh, the yeah. card game. Yeah. I'm not doing the card game. Oh, I kind of want to. Don't I, give I, in. I kind of need to. But I, I, I'm like, Magic doesn't do it for me anymore. My, my son's addiction to Pokemon cards doesn't help. And I don't know. I think you've actually got a good point there because the Warhammer Conquest card game was incredibly good. But if you had two people to play it with, you might as well be playing Warhammer. So it's really a tough call. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Good call. I don't and have I to paint have cards. I have a lot of my Conquest cards because the game is fantastic. I mean, what I would say is this. At the end of the day, if I am gonna, if I only have 30 to 45 minutes to game, you know, like I need something that's not Warhammer, I'm going to play Shadespire. Yep. I mean, and then I can use the Shadespire in Warhammer, like those models and everything. So I just, for me, I've like I filled that, and, and I don't have to endlessly buy boxes to get you know right the right cards or buy singles or whatever. I just buy the new Warband as it comes out, and I have everything. Mm. And Tom, you raise a good point there because that's another one of the wins for GW right now is that you've got games like. Silver Tower and Gore Chosen and, and Shade Spire, where we can take these models and use them in a lot of different ways. So yeah, if you're going to sink the cards into it, that's a that's I'm sorry, if you're going to sink the money into cards, that's a character that you could be buying or something for. for and you can use for any of your games. In for any of my only issue is I've got all the Shade Spire stuff. Yeah, I have all the Shade Spire stuff too, and Unless they release um, new stuff. Yeah, they well, do. You should actually paint the things you own, Ryan. Right. I, yeah, I probably need to get around to doing some of that. Fuck you. <laughs> yes, I, should. I should actually. Um... Yeah, yeah I mean, actually, yeah. yeah. No, okay, yeah. So I do have them all, but none of them are painted. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you can do what I'm doing. You can do a house cleaning. Um, I think I'd rather cut off my own arm with a tablespoon than, than I, clean uh, my house. Well, now he, means, he, means, he means jettison your old stuff. Yeah. So oh, if, okay. if you all will look, you notice anything about that bookshelf? There's a lot of uh, chaos. There's a lot of shit on it. <laughs> What's going on with that window? Can we talk about the window? No. <laughs> Is that the, um, peeping, the peeping Tom window? Uh, sorry, I don't mean like you know, here, YouTube, look, but like those are all peeping Tom. screws that I need to empty out. And snip, finish Jeez. snipping. I, I hope you, I hope you um, dispose of those in the right, in environmentally friendly way. I will. But anyways, no, I'm talking about up here. Yeah, because I'm remember, up here. yeah, oh, always remember. Yeah. You and may I'm like sea turtles, but sea turtles don't. So take care of your plastic. That's pretty. Actually, that's yeah. Okay. What the hell are you gonna do with all of that? And when are you gonna get around to it? For what? That's it. Boxes. Compared yeah, to no, that, that was all filled with product like two weeks ago. Yeah, comparatively, that's empty. Where's all the KO stuff? They just uh, moved well, it around. My ships with all my trophies there, but the actual models are in my other display case. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, don't look like if we scan left, there's still plenty of stuff there. But sure, you're making progress. Yep. What are you so, funding? That's the question. What are you funding? Yeah. That's uh nothing. Uh, <laughs> student loans. There you go. <laughs> He's a graduate of the collegiate <laughs> arcane. <laughs> All right. Somebody drink uh, my No, beer. I'm not I'm not funding any projects. Like I have enough projects, like I have enough like primary and secondary projects that I just don't like. Yeah, that, that's the realization I've come to too. I've got way too much stuff. <laughs> I he's love all the really credit card debt on all of the stuff he's already. Provided. No, like let me be. Fair. I own. I owe zero debt on what I own. Like let you be. Let you be what? <laughs> <laughs> zero debt. Zero. I. I feel like Tom is lying about actually like downsizing because let's face it, we're all addicts here. So he's just moving the stuff around, saying, "Yeah, I got rid of it. I got rid of it," and then you know, scratching the itch behind the camera. Yeah. Uh, still, I don't know the room I pilot in. He's doing exactly what he should have done a while ago, which is get rid of a bunch of old crap that that he that he was never going to do anything with. Mm -hmm. So, no, I like, don't know if you guys have heard about the prices of plastic crack here in Australia, but next time you're doing a house clean, feel free to donate to the the Australian. Like I'm good with that because that's a that's a lot of cleaning right there. Yeah. I'm, donating, I'm donating a, a bunch of other games on certain websites, but uh, not anything from GW. 
It's hard to let go of GW. Yep. I'm in the process of cutting out sprues for a Skaven army I'm about to sell. Really? Mm -hmm. Just selling the Vince. He doesn't have enough Skaven. <laughs> oh, my God. So many Skaven. And, of course, I offered to him first. But he did. Naturally. And Naturally. I said, I'm good. I have all the Skaven. One of my, like, my Vermin Lord is currently touring around the West. He's on a he's on a backpacking tour right now. Do you get photos of him like in front yeah. of all the um, hard rock cafe things and stuff? Or? Yeah, no, just other ninth age armies. Yeah, <laughs> he. Uh, really? uh, yeah, my old my old an, an equally failed business project. No, like my old buddy, uh, my old buddy Chris. You know, who gave uh, an AZ. He needed a vermin lord. I still had one on a on a the appropriate square base, so I brought one for him at uh, an Adepticon. And then I, and you know, he went to the ninth age tournament, which was kind of a next door, you know, not too far away. And yeah. then I forgot to get it back from him on Sunday. <laughs> we were already like, we'd already driven Tom and I had already driven like an hour and a half away. And I was like, yeah, whatever. It's fine. I mean, I trust Chris. I said, so I told him, yeah, just take it. Right? You all like, he's coming here to hang out in the summer. I was like, just, he can, he can hang out. He can live with you for a little while. So now, now he's been taking pictures of him in like places around the desert and stuff. And just That's like really his little cool. world tour as my little vermin lord goes around. You know that um the new characters <laughs> you guys have? You should get um like plushies made out of them. <laughs> uh there are already plans in place. Oh god. I was joking, but um you actually I think that's brilliant. like that'd be a brilliant I'm I don't even know why, but count me in. That's yeah. You got to. I, I saw those. I thought that was amazing. all possibilities. All more. <laughs> I'm just going to end up with your guys' faces on all my shit. It's not going to be good. <laughs> be like, um, this is the media room. This is my Vince and Tom room. And um, over there's the kitchen. <laughs> Bloody hell. What have you guys started? So eventually there's going to be like the throw pillows and blankets that come out too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be, it'll be one of those ones where it's like, uh, you know, a standard pillow, but it's got the arm for the single uh -huh. people who like to snuggle, and it's just gonna have like you can get one of either of the guys' faces. No, I'm gonna make Tom into a full size body pillow, like a like a you know. <laughs> Absolutely. But again, though, I'm a buyer. It clearly, yeah. looks like a cuddler. Yeah. Cuddle with Tom. I would see. I would buy that. I, I just really <laughs> would. Just, for the love. <laughs> and I know you guys are laughing, but I know all of you would buy one as well. It's like you would. I, <laughs> I would get someone else to buy it for me. Yeah, well, well, naturally. <laughs> I'd probably I mean, buy I, one for my wife. I would buy it <laughs> just to like have something to punch. <laughs> That's something ridiculous. Dude, my wife's over here roasting me in the background. She'd be like, at least one of them would be coming to bed with me at night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, At least I one of them knows when to shut up. <laughs> At least one of them knows to shut up in an argument. No. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> See, now you're making me think if I need to freaking get one of those made as well now. <laughs> Actually, but, because then you could be like, look, I've got to go to I've got to go to this GT as well. But it's okay because I'm leaving pillow me here for you. <laughs> Well, is it something that you can use as a tax write-off? That's really what you want to look at. Well, that's yeah. a full Conti question. Uh, let's, be very, let's be very <laughs> clear, friends. We're not making any money on this. Anything we sell is going to be almost at cost. <laughs> yeah, that's that just question. makes me want to get more. <laughs> like, if we're we not, do any we're not it, trying to make money off the community. No, absolutely not. If any of that, sure. like, whatever of that comes to pass, I, my goal is not to make it like monetized in a money making way. No, it is for lols. Share, yeah. Yeah, it is it is it is all for lols, nothing more. It I wouldn't carry the way I'm still buying. Or like, you know, the just, idea that I would honestly propose is if you do anything for profit, like do it for charity or something like that. And that's what we normally do. Like yeah. when we do like fundraise, you know, like any nor like traditionally what well, everything we've done has been you know charity based. Yeah. Yeah. All the uh, and I'd also like to announce Thanks, that I am opening a the charity roast. for the uh, roast the in the having. background. I made a comment about uh, charity, and she informed me, "Well, I'm a charity case." <laughs> oh, I can feel the love. Amazing. 
Hang on, can, can we, we hear the, uh, the, the camera right now? Because that would be perfect. No, it's that, that, like, that man. Let's get her on. This show. Off. Get her on camera. Get, get her on the show. show. She needs her own show. That's what she needs. She does need her own show. The <laughs> world of I would Widow's show. <laughs> I've been I've been trying to get that going for ages now, but every time I get I get some ladies interested, all their husbands like, please don't, dude. Please, I'm gonna, I'm begging you, don't do it. And I'm like, why? And they're all afraid that they'll that you know these ladies will find out how much they've actually spent on hobby. <laughs> That's exactly so, what my brain was going. On. <laughs> so, you know, I like, will say, and I'm, I'm, she's gonna watch it, so I'm gonna get my ass beat for this. But that is one of the dangers of my wife now building models. Is she's actually looking into all the containers in the basement. <laughs> so, oh, she did not think about what that cost. Yep. Oh yeah. Hey, at, at least you can. At least you can say, "But honey, look how much it would have been in Australia." <laughs> and she'll look at it and be like, "Oh, okay. Well, that's good then. At least you got a bit of a bargain." <laughs> look at all the money I saved. Uh, yeah. Exactly, Des. What's what's the phrase? You lose money if you don't buy it this way. That's right. Vince, by the way, my uh, oh, uh, Amber mentioned that she's she wants she wants to do a show with uh, with Kathy. Um. On, uh, you know, like something along the lines of like Warhammer Widows and Wine or something like that. Yeah, my wife's already proposed the same thing. So <laughs> she wants to know. What, she was already asking me to schedule it out. I, That's amazing. I, I wholeheartedly my wife would this. probably be down for that too. <laughs> Not even joking. <laughs> oh, there you go. We sounds like we've got a show. The, the Let them have their wine. We're drinking the hard stuff. If, if that actually happened, I, I feel like. Um, like the subscribers would just migrate. It, it, there would be this mass migration over to that channel and none of us would ever speak to anybody ever again. <laughs> like I, 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 that it has the potential to be the funniest thing anyone's ever seen. Like <laughs> just because I think half an hour of it would be, you know, talking about how, how, how sorry for us they all feel that, that we play with little plastic men instead of going outside into the sunshine. <laughs> At least that's what I cop. There's something to that. What, the sunshine? Yes. Who needs that? Well, in my defense, I'm out in the hot sunshine all day, so this is my time to cool off. The top of your head tells me you're not, or you've got a really good hat. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wear a hat. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, it, I think James may be allergic to the sun. <laughs> you no, know, the, the problem is if I don't wear the hat, I blind incoming pilots as they're landing, and it's a big hazard. So, <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what happened? How'd the plane end up there? Uh, the sun reflected off the top of my head, sir, and um, I blinded two pilots. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that's the story. You've got to knock on 300 doors and, and tell 300 widows that um, unfortunately due to your shiny head so. yeah, I don't yeah, think, when I don't you put it that way relationships with sheep are much easier oh yeah <laughs> they are you, the dates are cheap the presents are cheap they don't care if you forget anniversaries and stuff they don't and when you either and when you're done with it mutton yeah like, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah my wife's like, when you're done with it, you can eat it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And wear it. Best of both and worlds. Wear, and wear it. Yeah, that's it. I loved her so much, I turned her into slippers. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it is no wonder people flock to your region of the world. <laughs> oh. and, there, and there's a pun for the night. Excellent. <laughs> Mate, there's, there's 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 nothing there's nothing more appealing than a flock of sheep. Nothing in this world. It's it's the mo actually for all, like coming over to Australia, they make those jokes all the time. Like they like full on, and they barrage you with jokes about how Kiwis like to you know make love to sheep and all that sort of crap. And um, I started to get pretty frustrating, and I had a job over here when I moved, and they were having a go at me about it. And I said, yeah, that's right, I. I do. I, I love sheep um, often, as often as I can. And, um, you know, next time I go home, I intend to get with as many sheep as possible. Um, in fact, that's the only reason I'm going back. And I said, um, 
and and I thoroughly enjoy it, and I do my my bit um, because then once we're finished, we we um, we kill them and we send them over here, and you Australians eat them. Uh, it's actually the, it's actually their national meat over here, and most of it's imported from New Zealand. So it's sort of you could. I remember his face. He was like, oh, "You, uh, 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 yeah." I, there was just nothing after that. So I think um, I think I think we need to frame that for Americans. You use the phrase "make love to sheep," but that's not the word we use. So how would you define that? Is there uh, wine involved? The picnic? <laughs> Uh, to, it, it depends on the guy, really. Um, for me, I just don't, I can't be bothered with any of that crap. So, you uh, know, I'll, true I'll probably true say, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I don't mind combing the, the mud out of the wool. I think that's that's a gentlemanly thing. Like, don't get me wrong, there needs to be some form of chivalry involved. Well, that's well, that's past that. like a sheep, right? So, <laughs> Vince, does bestiality hurt your channel? This is not my channel. Oh, yeah, this is Paul. Paul's <laughs> okay. We're good. They're used to it here. <laughs> once we've, once we've, once you, once all of your questions are answered, let's never speak of this again. <laughs> Agreed. Oh well, at least at least Alzheimer's reputation can't get scarred from it. So that's all right. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me, Paul. <laughs> He's just sitting here with his oh, oh, awesome. <laughs> I, uh, you know, uh, I, all I can say is I'm glad that uh, the YouTube demonetization thing is now in full swing and I have no chance of ever being monetized ever again because this video would sure as hell be demonetized very quickly. <laughs> well, it depends on what circle it's shared in, really, I think. <laughs> it's a different viewership, that's true. So, I, I, it's, all, it's all a matter of perception. Marketing, right? I don't know, yeah. Paul. I feel like this is the next very progressive thing that you could be doing, so this is very cutting edge. <laughs> it is. It is. That's right in Paul's wheelhouse. Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of feeling like I'm in the uh, category of never getting invited back again. So I need to say, I I'm there too. I am there. actually. I just finished messaging Paul this morning. I was like, "Hey, dude, when's your next? Um, you know, getting drunk and talking absolute crap." And he's, I said, "I've I've really got to get on sometime because I feel really bad every time you invite me. I'm always like mowing lawns or feeding ducks and stuff or having and, breakfast." Um, <laughs> yeah, or having breakfast, or um, painting my nails, like just stuff. <laughs> and now that I've finally managed to get on, I've just ruined everything. So, um, when when you paint your nails, do you use Lamy and Medium? I haven't tried that yet, so I'm looking for a recommendation. <laughs> I um, I like a good. I, I like I like the two thin coats. Yeah. Um, it's it's yeah. It depends on your color choice and if you're using metallics or glitters. So. As long as the nails match the fingers, the toenails match the fingers, then it's all good. We're not picky. We're not picky in the US. No. No. I'm addicted to Fortnite. I haven't painted anything all day. Oh, boy. Another I one. I thought I'd admit that to the side. I don't even know what Fortnite is. I, I, that's oh, how I don't, I'll look it up. That's it's, it. uh, it's a cartoon version of uh, PUBG. Yep. What? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Now I'm look it up. You're good. You just end up in it's, trouble when you do that. Yeah, it's microtransactions. Don't worry about it. You could be buying AOS figures. Good. Or, my, good or my Death Guard. Death Guard. Yeah. No, I I do not need another game to get involved in. Thank you. Yeah. It's the latest obsession here on base with all the youngsters. Huh. 40k? No, 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 um, Fortnite. Oh, Fortnite. Oh, yeah, it's uh, all the obsession with uh, my wife's middle school students, too, so I guess they're in good company. Yeah, they're yeah well, the apparently everybody in this game has slept with my mother, so yeah. <laughs> I've just turned the, turned the chat off. Um, it's weird yeah. that you happen to join that exact server. I mean, it, the odds are... <laughs> It, it does sound know, a little right? conspiratorial, doesn't it? Yeah. I just figured. I figured it's all the same guys. They've just followed me from Call of Duty to keep telling me about how they sleep with my mum. 
<laughs> I mean, I would really say that you're missing a golden opportunity to talk with these guys and learn exactly how this all came to pass. No, <laughs> because I I shut it. To share there. I I'm scared that one of them's going to be like, son, is that you? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> I'll be like, dad, you're 12. <laughs> so, I, yeah. I, I, according to video games, kids these days are getting up to some stuff far too young. Like, I, I'm actually shocked. Some of the words that uh, that come out of their bloody mouths is pretty, pretty messed up. So my kids won't be playing any of these games for a long, long time. That's for certain. Yeah, my uh, my ten year old went to say he was looking for something the other day, and he didn't say looking. He just looked at me and said, "Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. I dropped an f bomb." I'm like, "Oh, great." Is that where you had to take him around back like old Yeller and then just start again with another trial? <laughs> no, I had, I I had to walk to the other side of the store so my wife didn't realize I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, recently would, um, my, wife, yeah. my daughter said, oh shit, like in proper context and usage, and I, I couldn't help but actually be kind of proud. Exactly. <laughs> There's that moment of pride. Like that was the yeah. perfect time to that was the perfect time to use your middle finger in traffic. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, it, I applaud you, but don't do it when your mother's around. Exactly. Yep. I mean, that's where my daughter learned it from. It wasn't from me. <laughs> oh, that, of course, of course. Well, isn't that the killer when when they get the word from somebody else and you know that the teachers think it's you? <laughs> yep. Hey, somebody's actually watching. Paul, I have a question for you. Yeah. Hey, um, what do we think will be the next army out? Edeneth. Stormcast. Well, yeah, after Edeneth. Stormcast. <laughs> it's, it's always Stormcast after a new release. 50-50, that's mean, a good bet. But I, yeah, I, still I, like Stormcast and or the Death Faction, the Nighthawk stuff. I think it's like new new army release, not, um, not update to, to current or anything like that. I think it's... Um, hmm. New Vince chamber of Stormcast is, is new. I forgot when that is new. Yeah. Oh, no. The next thing that's actually totally new right. level of I had an F deep kin new. Yeah, yeah. I could be the angel elves. Yeah, yeah. angel elves. Probably yeah. that. So the high elf replacement. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, there's going to be so many. Sad people over here with high elf armies. That's gonna and be, it's gonna be yeah, there'll be so many happy mm -hmm. ninth age players over here as well who score cheap high elves. So, yeah. no, I mean, players, I'm getting rid of mine now. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. You're selling your high elves? Yeah, some of yeah? them. Yeah, how many dragon knights you got? Uh, I have two new, new in box unused, I'm telling. He's selling okay. his extra stuff. Like he still has a huge amount of that crap. You have to understand that's like the his high elves are like he has as much high elves as I have Skaven, but his are all like inboxed on sprue and not a and like two units are painted. That's not true. Three units. You're right. I painted three Feni for you. So beyond <laughs> that, you've got two units painted. Hey, I could walk you guys over to a case and there's like twelve thousand points of high elves assembled in the case. Mm -hmm. Assembled, but not He's painted. He's selling the stuff over top of that. Um, so no, I, I have stuff. like 20, I have like 10 Spire Guard, 10 Sword Masters. Uh, I have 30 Phoenix Guard that are almost painted. They, they have base coats, washes, and no highlights. Um, I have a, uh, I have one of those foot guys with the Tridents. One of those foot guys. Like an anointed, is that what you're talking about? No, the, I oh, got the, the Lothern hero, the or the the Swift Hawk uh, Lothern hero. Sea Helm. Yeah, um, right. I have I have both. Of, I have the named and the non-named anointed um, painted. Can we take a step back for just one second, Vince? You said something about um, a Night Haunt release. Is that confirmed in any way? I haven't had much time to follow the rumors and all. They showed clips of what appeared to be death models in the coming soon thing at Adepticon. Um, and like it, one of them very much looked like a new black coach. We've seen the new, we've seen the art image of the guys who look like sort of ghost warriors rolling along with the, uh, Herald or the Herald or whatever his name is. The, the, um, not Shrouds. Shrouds. yeah, who, which are, they're clearly not Karn Wraiths. Right. And so 
the strong s suspicion is based on all of that 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 there is a some release like that. Oh. No, I, but we, that has not been confirmed beyond sort of that, uh, you know, beyond those items. I mean, there was definitely death models that were unrecognizable in the video at Adepticon. So okay. take of that what you will. Yeah. Well, I just want a new black coach so I can actually have a black coach because I refuse to build the one I've got. It's ugly. Yeah, no, because they're like, terrible. I like, I don't think... <laughs> They're yeah. not if they if they do a new black coach, they're going to probably rename it and rewrite the scroll. They oh, I hope they scroll. rewrite the fucking scroll. It's oh. it's terrible. It doesn't belong in that army. It doesn't even no. fit. No, I mean, it made sense. Stuff. It made sense in a vampire counts army because it's got a very Dracula vibe to it. But as somebody who has played the undead army since I don't know fourth or fifth edition Warhammer. We didn't decide to go into this army because of vampires. So the idea of wielding ghosts has a lot more appeal than doing something like vampires with black coaches. It's a, it's a different feel to it. I don't know. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm somewhat excited for it because it's death. But I guess that's a little bit disappointing because I wanted something drastically different. I mean, we yeah. lost the Tomb Kings, and so I was hoping, like, not that we were, oh, Tomb Kings are going to come back. No, obviously not, not yet. There's something interesting? Yeah, something completely different. I don't want, basically, here's the same thing we already had with a slight twist. Like, I mean, if it if it ends up being, like, ghost pirates or something, I'll celebrate a little bit, but... Uh, well, well, I, just, I think the idea of ghosts in and of itself has some excitement. I mean, zombies, skeletons, we see them everywhere. Vampires, we see them everywhere. So if you're See, going to go the thing is, route, there's got to be a change. Yeah, but it needs to be a change that's going to show off the new technology and everything that they've implemented. Um, Dynamic. As far as yeah, I mean, like look at the new um, look at the new 40k stuff, and 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 look at the the new models that they've released so far as well for AOS. They've come leaps and bounds um, from what it used to, what the stuff used to look like, and what their their molds and stuff used to be. They're they're amazing now. And what they've done is re um, released all these changes for death, but it's all the same minis. And I feel like to go along with this awesome story and, and everything else that's with it, uh, should be they should be showcasing what they can do now, especially with yes. an army like death that has the ability to be... Um, for, I mean, most people would be like, oh, well, they're just dead. You know, everything dead looks the same. But um, the difference between like zombies and skeletons and things like that is quite vast. And there's so much that they can do, like a zombie dragon... You know, stuff like that, that's just, they, they could go, they could do so much with it. And you, just you know they have one of those, right? Point. Yeah, but I mean, like, showcasing the, um, the, the new technology that they've used to, to bring, make new models and stuff. Well, I, I agree with you. It's just that zombies and skeletons and vampires are, are the hot property. They're, they're cliche at this yeah, point. Yeah, well, give me new skeletons. Well, like, I agree with you with because very, the old ones are very cartoony. But I, well, I would not like only that, but they're twenty-eight mil, aren't they? I, you know, instead of the thirty-two. Well, which mil skeleton scale are you talking about? Because like the skeletons that they from the two thousand ten release, the vampire count skeletons are appropriate yeah. proportioned. The problem, is, yes, yeah, they are better. Yeah, they they are. Than what you're what you're alluding to is the Tomb King skeletons with the oversized sized heads and, and hands. spears yeah the spears were like as thick as freaking planks of wood well i'm yes i'm alluding to those because i probably have about a hundred of those yeah, um, but i think the thing is i agree with you about the new technology and if we go back to the deep for a moment and we talk about the eidolons and you see the images of them having a school of fish woven through their the wave that they're riding on it's crazy mm. Yeah, and you think about how they could do that. All I could think about is ways that you could do an ethereal army with that type of technology. So you know, we're yeah, we're talking about well, the same well, thing. We're just talking about a different concept with new models. Take some stuff that Vince painted recently. Vince painted some. Um, what were those bloody um, Medusae chicks or whatever? You know, the half snake, half and crap. Um, even it's all crap. Yeah, and, but, but Vince was saying, like, look how small their scales are. Look at all the tiny little details that it's nearly – there's so much detail in here, it's nearly impossible to, to do. Like, they, they can actually get detail down that much now. I just feel right. like they should, they should use yes. that ability. And, they should. You know, and the new skeletons are better. I, 
the old skeletons didn't even really work well if you didn't pose them exactly the same way. But I think the other thing to consider, too, is with this new technology in terms of the modeling aspect, and if they did do some sort of an ethereal army and they, and they used similar techniques, one of the things that's great for people that are new to the hobby is that they wash well. Now, my yeah. wife, who has never painted a miniature, was looking at those deep can and concerned about the scales and some of the aspects of the armor. And it, it was like, well, that's just instant talent when you wash that and the scales pop right out at you. So it's time. What's that? A little bit of dry brushing, probably. Right. Yeah, yep. This is a great time for them to release these types of miniatures that have, a, again, a very spirit, spirit ethereal quality to them. I don't know. Part of me was just hoping that we would we would see things that are kind of death themed or like monster themed that we haven't seen yet in AOS. Like because there's a lot of other types of creatures, and we don't have to go into all of them, but maybe include a few more. Like, I mean, why the heck does Chaos have werewolves and Death doesn't? Why don't we have you know more of these like gargoyles and things like that that you see depicted in other forms of fantasies? As something related to undeath and death armies, why don't we have those kinds of aesthetics yeah. here as well? Werewolves because there's don't. twenty. Yeah. yeah. Why do not have werewolves? Yeah, don't believe the hype. No one has werewolves. Despite what Maroc's not here, so I can say that with confidence. There are no werewolves in this game. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, within within the model range, not necessarily within like the tabletop. But this is the time to have, if, if you're going to do a black coach, do a beautiful piece of art, a sculpture that, that people can paint up and feel proud of, because this really is the time to show off the ability to do something like that. With the, the quality of painting, with the quality of sculpting, I, I would just love to put away every vampire I have, every skeleton and zombie I have, and do a death army that's just flat out different, not zombies or skeletons or zombie pirates or any of the things that have been around for ages, especially here in the U S where every other Netflix show is a vampire show. Or the war gas we're holding up right now. I Um, I think that you're going to see, I think you're going to see an undead construct army within the next two years. Well, golems would be a good choice. No, like, so it could be golem esque. Like, I think it'll be a merger from the Morgas because those are technically constructs, aren't they? Yes. So I think it'll be some merger of Morgas, the Tomb Kings, because all the Tomb Kings, weird stuff like the snakes and the phoenixes and all that were technically constructs. Um, and you some don't mean phoenixes, like, but I know what you mean. Yeah. And then, like, the uh, also the your other dudes, your Shiopti. Um, those are all undead constructs um, and golems, like flesh golems. I think some mixture of those Our things golems, you will probably see in the next couple of years. I, I hope you're right, because for me, I think one of the things, again, as somebody who I sort of went into Warhammer Fantasy with mixed emotions because I wanted to feel the Death Army, but, uh, you know, I grew up a fan of zombie movies and I'm already sick of them even several years ago. So I would love to see something different in the War of Death. And these are the types of things that we're not seeing every day in The Walking Dead and a thousand other TV shows. So seeing something like even the Flesh Eater Courts, where they at least differentiate ghouls from other types of monsters like zombies. It's the fluff it lends, of it, it lends people like me a little more excitement than just, oh, look, it's vampires and and stuff that everyone sees all the time. Well, it's hot right now, like all that stuff is. Well, that's the problem. I don't want to feel the Twilight Sparkle Army. <laughs> <laughs> but but are you the market, though? Like, So the, the flip side of that is that some people do want to feel that army. Some people do want to feel the Game of Thrones white army. Um, I agree like with that. you. And there's no reason why they can't continue to make those models. But am I the audience? Yeah. Because I've been playing their games for like 20 years. Well, I mean, what I would say is that what they're trying to do is they're trying to tap into new markets. That's what they're all going exactly. to push I agree. In. I and, agree. And they're going to make whatever they think is going to reach the reach the audience, reach audiences that their current armies are not reaching. I agree, yep. which is why things like the KO army and the Deepkin army are a great idea. And 
branching out with the undead. I mean, eventually people are going to get tired of the of the same units that we've seen over and over again. So, I know something wildly different they can do. They can make Draugr instead of zombies and skeletons, and I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> but I would love Draugr. to see some Draugr models. Are you thinking like Dur <laughs> like Drow and Duerden mix? No, 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 Draugr. That's the uh, they're the Norse equivalent of like mummies and crap. Right. Um, yeah. Well, so like if you saw that. Thor Ragnarok, Tom, yeah. they're yeah. the undead things in that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they could do an Irish bog wraith, whatever the case may be, just something to make right. it different. Yeah. Not that different. I have an opinion on this. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you haven't thought about this extensively. Well, the the sad part is that like almost every story I've ever had published was about zombies, so I'm shooting myself in the foot here. Look, if they're going to go that direction, if we're going to go for some kind of other weird cultures undead, which I'm all about, that's fine, then it needs to be, then they need to exp go, they, they, we need to head east. I knew you were going to go that, like the Japanese, like jumping vampires or whatever. Oh, as long as he doesn't say Pandaren or some shit. No, some oh. Onis would, Onis would be very, very exciting. No, I'm not. I'm no. I'm talking undead. Like I don't want to see demons. I mean, like Penangan or Penal Penalogan or however you say them. Oh uh, yeah, the vampires that just are like heads with guts hanging out of them that come up out right, of right, right. You know, stuff like that would be amazing. Like that would be mind blowing, and they could sculpt that now. And what is the what is the spirit that's always drunk from Japanese mythology? Ed Kennedy. It's a Ryan. Oh. Ed there's a. There's a <laughs> No, there's a there's a, a Japanese uh, spirit that's a spirit of like drinking. But, dwarf, but all is. that's the point. Like all of this is the conversation, though. Like they could do any of this, any and all of this at this point, and they 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 have not yet. And that's fine. But, there's still plenty of time. We're not in a rush here. Uh, yes, if they do too yeah. much. They're in a they're in a real catch twenty two here. If they do too much new stuff, we're going to be like, bah, we want all the old things updated because we like our old things too. <laughs> and if we do, and if they do just old things, bah, we want new stuff. When are you going to do a new thing? Yeah, because it's just, it's, you got the voice and everything. Neil, Vince, do you, do you work for them? Uh, yeah, some people seem to think so. <laughs> yeah, that's been a rumor. Uh, no, no, I, I, I just, like I'm sympathetic to the position. Like you are, you're that, accurate, and I think you're completely accurate. Because... Our 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 number of releases here is so far beyond. Like again, much like yourself, I've been you know I started in like fourth edition or whatever you know right or you said maybe third, but like I started back in ninety seven or whatever right, and you know, like I've never seen anything like this. I, I have I'm spoiled yeah. for choice. Like exactly. it'll all happen. You it'll all so happen. Right. Just relax. Take the ride. It's yeah. Fine. There, 11 years for an or codex and like ah, I'm getting excited about every new release. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah just, just let's go on the ride together and, you know, let's be happy about the new things. I, I have armies. Of course, I want to see more than others as well, too. We all do. And in time, we'll all get our druthers and more. I want to see I them mean, explore the this two armies at the start of this whole mess that I begged for were Sky Dwarves. And the Marathi-led uh, Daughters of Cain. Mm -hmm. And I am on you record and begging for that on the on camera on yeah. Warhammer Weekly. And, you, were the, uh, you were responsible for that. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm responsible for it, but they gave me what I wanted, so... No, Tom is responsible. They got tired of him complaining at them all the time, so they said, if this will shut him up, we'll make it happen. You know what they called him a douche. They even called him a douche. Yep. Really saying, then then he made all the lists for it, <laughs> and it was fine. <laughs> but the joke's on them. Tom will always find something new to complain about. Yep. Well, I was saying, but if that is the case, that's bad news for them, because now <laughs> I know what kind of company they are. Now I know that I just need to complain about whatever I want, and I'm always going to get it. You're saying they've capitulated to terrorists, and, and you're the terrorist yes. in this exactly. scenario? Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's the, it's the old kind of joke of like, hey, would you sleep with me for, you know, $50, $10? No. Would you sleep with me for $50? No. 100000 Uh, No. A million. Yes. Okay, now I know what type of, you know, person you are. Wait, how did we uh, get to talking about shit? Now it's negotiation. Negotiate call. <laughs> yeah, like that's... <laughs> 
<laughs> that's the point. You're like, if that's the type of company they are, then man, they are screwed. I somehow I uh, I sincerely doubt that anywhere on the whiteboard is what Army did Tom ask for. <laughs> uh, I agree. Yeah. Again, okay. <laughs> next Vince, minute. <laughs> Vince, and right now in Nottingham, somebody is putting that on a whiteboard. Just to be yeah. Watch yeah, Twitter. It's, it's, uh, right, it's, it's right next to up. <laughs> it's, right a, it's a whiteboard in the closet, but yes. Yeah. No, Vince, I think you've got a good point. Um, yes, there's a lot of things that we can think of, and a thousand or a million other people can think of a lot of things too. But every release is exciting. And there's no reason why we can't be patient for it and still hope for it at the same time. Sure. I think we have a job with a pe newer people that have not really gotten involved in the hobby and people that have been at it for a while. Yep. They're really, they're really hitting their stride right now. The best part in all their releases is as a death player, I look at every release and I'm like, which of these can I make a dead version of for my army? Like the giant freaking sea turtles? There's going to be dead ones in my army. Just wait and see. There's going to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle armies. At least Why do you kill everything I love? <laughs> I mean, yes. The moment that they put those big turtles out and, you know, priced at 380 it's like, all right, well. 380 Oh, that means it'll only be 520 here in Aussie. No, 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 no. no. Not, not, not cost-wise, points-wise. I mean, I'm yeah, sure it's like... <laughs> right. I'm, I'm sure it's... I'm sure I did state a roughly accurate price for what it's going to cost in Australia. <laughs> um, exactly, yes. You know, that four turtle army, though, that's tough. Like, you that and you're, you're like, you can fit those in and like your three tenors. And then, I can you fit all that in a general? No, oh, no, no, because uh, 380, obviously, double on that. It's going to be six, uh, 760. 760, 40. so 1520. 1520 and then you're going to pay bare mins of uh 280 420 for battle line for the right one so you're at 1940 and you have nobody to be your your general, general at six there's no hero turtles, right what if i take yield? uh they did say there's a couple different builds of the turtle i don't if know there's a hero that, turtle then, then you're, you're good good. yeah you just give you just give the turtle a pirate hat and he becomes your commander i'm getting them all ninja masks there you go. It's bad enough that the main character has, a, has an eye patch. That's bad enough. I, who was it that said that they really liked the fact that the um, that they were blind? I did say that. I uh, yeah, I, I really like that as well. Um, okay, I, I was afraid you. I was afraid you were going to go the Des route and ruin that for me. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I think it's good too. I just hope that it, um, it's not like like. Um, like Daredevil blind, like um, oh, yeah. and, and not the not the not the Netflix series Daredevil, the really shitful movie that what's his name did. Ben Affleck. Yeah, God, that guy needs to stop. Yeah, acting. I don't, I don't like, remember because yeah, like Spawn, yeah. I've repressed that memory. But uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Dude, hey, Spawn Smith was amazing. Who? Kevin Smith. Oh. It's in the Daredevil movie. Go watch it. Yeah, so was like Cipher. Look, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that Daredevil movie. You guys are too oh, hard on that. It, it has one of the best real? playground Garbage. fight scenes ever. Best, oh. best, best fight scene, best mock fight scene on a playground in movie history. <laughs> I don't know. South Park has some good ones. I would rather <laughs> sit down and watch a Skrillex music video on repeat than have to sit through a Ben Affleck film again. <laughs> oh gosh. I mean. Are you really going to say that like that movie was as bad as like Electra or like or even put it in the same category as Spawn? Yeah, or Catwoman or you know like any superhero movie we got before two thousand one or sorry ninety nine? Or any of the modern DC ones? Oh, and yeah, it, it yeah, is as bad as those. Uh, I mean, look, it, spoiled for choice uh, situation. Absolutely, absolutely. Look, it was fine. It was I harbor more resentment after what he did to Batman. So. Um, uh, but Electra, yeah, you got me there. Okay, that was piss poor. But come on, Catwoman wasn't all that bad, was it? <laughs> it was. It was super that bad. It was Which so one? much worse. Ooh. Like With the Holly Berry, the Holly Berry, the, uh, the Holly Berry one, yes. Yeah, that was pretty bad. It was as bad as that and worse. 
That is a, that is but a hard. Have a functional plot, unlike Batman vs Superman. Like the people, I mean, that is a hard pass. I mean, did it? Did it actually have a plot? I think that's that is a hard fall down. And look, I think that's what to... most guys that watch that movie just for the ass say. Ah, oh, that had an excellent plot. Like the plot I, that was just to die I, for. I think that's right. my method for that movie too. <laughs> like, you know, Maybe she if you get really ever high. show up with for her Razzie for that movie. Like, credit to Halle Berry, she did show up and accept her Razzie for Catwoman in person. Well, she worked for it. Sure. Yeah, I didn't like that film, actually. You, you do have a good point. Um, yeah, Catwoman was a terrible movie. And so was that Elektra. And so was, like, every superhero movie made before Blade. Ex- exempting, like, 1989 Batman and 78 Superman. Those like, were made after Blade. Are we allowed to talk about the Blade movies anymore, or do we automatically go to jail for tax evasion? <laughs> you do get audited automatically. Hey, yeah. I just rewatched Blade, and it it holds up. Blade is a it, does. it was a great film. I stand it behind Blade. Film. Okay, yeah, I'd want I'd consider renting it. I hadn't yet, but I guess I will. It's a it's, yeah, no, it's worth it. It's super worth it. Uh, and still some great fighting in that first one, like great martial arts, great. Uh, like Whistler's an awesome character. That he is. I like I, I, I love the first movie. Oh, and there's hey, no is it snowing there where you guys are? There's uh, no glitter in the blade. Uh, yeah, tomorrow it's going to. It was seven tomorrow it has potential to snow. It's freaking New England. Yeah. Mate, it is so hot here, it's not funny. I thought you said it was like thirty one. That's not too bad. Yeah, but um what is it called? Uh Humidity? Oh, God. Don't make me use big words. It's too hot for big words. Yeah, it's at like a hundred percent. Yeah. Really? <laughs> so ah, it's so not you live bad. in the Florida of Australia. I live in tropical Queensland. It's cold. And it is hotter than Satan's balls. <laughs> what is your point of reference? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've I've <laughs> <laughs> I thought he made so, that pretty clear. Yeah, so um, so, so one, I thought he was being night, figured it was about four in the morning, and I was on my way back from a rave, and it was mm-hmm. yeah, I was lonely. So. <laughs> has out out the fence. We've heard this before. Everything <laughs> I know about Australia, every like everything I know about Australia, I've learned from a combination of the Weekly Planet, Plumbing the Death Star. And uh, and Michael from Doom and Darkness. That's it. Those three individuals. Like, if it's something they've said about Australia, then I just take them. Take them. So there you go. Yeah, most of my knowledge yeah. of Australia comes from like memes about terrifying things that happen in Australia. Okay, so, absolutely so here's one. Here's one for wildlife you, right? that you have there that just wants to kill you constantly. Yeah, it does. Literally, it does. Like my next door neighbor decided. Um, that he would catch a wild cockatoo in his backyard, and now he's built like a cage that covers half of his backyard for this thing to live in. And it's like it's a wild bird; it's supposed to be free and stuff, but whatever. Um, and now, be, because it's there, um, his wife leaned over the fence, and she's like Spanish or something, and she's like, "Hola, cómo estás? Muy bien, muy bien." And um, I'm like, "Yep, yeah, what's cracking?" She goes, "Oh, just to let you know, the." Um, we think the bird has attracted snakes. We saw a snake in your tree the other day. And I'm like, oh, great. She goes, it was only only maybe two minutes long. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. Okay. That's just. <laughs> okay. With that? Okay. Only. only. Inside kids. <laughs> okay. um, and then there was this news article about this chick who, and this was a little while ago. I think I've mentioned this to Paul, but she had a pet snake and she loved the snake so much. She would like, you know, sleep with, they, it. It, sleep with it and everything. <laughs> And then the bloody thing got um, got hungry, so it starved itself in order to be able to fit her in. And she was all worried that the snake was depressed and starving itself to death. And the vet's like, nah, love, it wants to eat you. <laughs> it's starving itself so it can fit you in its stomach. Yep. That's Australia. Don't, don't come here. I read that. <laughs> Pretty, uh, uh, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like yeah. that. <laughs> But you know, in, 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 the, in, that, the, in the in week that, that I spent you know, in Sydney and Melbourne, I never saw that. I do not. No, you won't. No, see, I live in Brisbane, and, and but um, 
we live in a in a suburb where there's a lot of like I live on a golf course, so there's a fair bit of bushland around and stuff. But um, like in the cities, you won't. So it's it's all right. But uh, I mean, it's it's okay because like my kids don't need to go to school with see through backpacks and metal detectors and stuff. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a little yeah, better. Too soon. So, too soon. I'm doing so. I'm doing okay. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, hey, I, you I, don't I, have to I, worry about your children being eaten by wildlife. That's no big deal. Yeah, but let's face it, mathematically, that's less likely. <laughs> and if one of them do, Ding. if one of them do, I've got three. Like, mathematically, I can accept that loss. You know, I've got three. <laughs> one out of three is okay. Um, so if, and if it if, does happen, I'm buying a lotto ticket. <laughs> if we are going to take this comparison further, do you have lockdown kangaroo dr- drills and things at your schools? No. So your kids no. don't know how to react if it happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> put it this way. None of, none of my kids are going to be like, Dad, I need to take your AK to school today. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think my they're, point they're is made. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, like, there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's no... I think we, we do do drills for... Um, like bomb you threats do do drills? And stuff. Yeah, do do drills. <laughs> Um, let me make myself perfectly clear. No, we do, we do, we do they, they do drills for, um, for bomb scares. And, and, uh, if a dangerous person wants to enter the school grounds, they all have, um, you know, somewhere they know they need to go and, and be, and so, so you know, stranger danger and stuff like that. So that's like the worst of it. Well, what do you guys that, do think, about, yeah. what do you guys do about like ring wraiths and hobbits? <laughs> um, <laughs> mostly there's uh sacrifices to the gods uh and that sort of keeps that in check most of the time so do those Just, do those yeah. really cross over much from new zealand because i thought that that's where they primarily stayed uh they can't swim that's a good point yeah. well there's a saying here about we just lived across the ditch because the tasman sea is not that big so yeah. um I, I don't i don't know maybe they they travel maybe it's airborne <laughs> You know, maybe they they come here on the tail of a Malaysian Airlines flight or something. I don't know. Maybe that explains one of those. You know, it just weighed it down too much. So, uh, yeah. But no, it's 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 really nice here. It's just super hot, and in New Zealand, it doesn't get this hot. So, although I've been here for years, I still die every summer. It it just it's ridiculous. Like forty degrees centigrade is what's that in Fahrenheit? Pretty hot. Like, I think it's like what yeah. about ninety something, right? Somewhere yeah, like that's not one hundred. Yeah, that's not uncommon. Um, and that's, yeah, oh, welcome to the, to the Midwest. Yep. Yeah, so I, I think, think I think there's hot places. Like oh, that. it's forty so, Celsius is one hundred and four Fahrenheit. There you go. Holy, yeah, okay. So yeah, it gets hot all the time. That's here. like Texas heat. Yeah. But see, we don't have stuff like um, the American Dream. Like I don't know what that is, but we don't have it. Um, <laughs> the, um, it's uh, air conditioning. Yeah, oh, okay. and it's, it's like that and like a six gridiron. pack of Schlitz. Well, it's hope. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm pretty gridiron. sure that none of us have the American Dream anymore either. Oh, okay. All right. well, and we don't we don't have American football. You know, the one where the ladies run around in a suit of armor or whatever and bounce off each other we don't have that sport um we've got the men's version though which is rugby so that's all right uh that's the baseball. one where everybody like hugs and cups each other's balls right yeah. <laughs> that's uh, no no that's 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 hockey actually did you know that um the new zealand uh olympic badminton team are called the black Cox? yep so I love that about New Zealand. Their their yeah. their um their rugby team is the All Blacks. They've got yeah. a, <laughs> everything is is black in in New Zealand. So they were like, we can get away with this. And sure enough, we're far enough away from Africa. We can get away with this. Yeah, racism's still right here, right? Okay, we're good. But uh, wow. yeah. No, I, <laughs> I so since we've, reached the ed part, since, since we've reached the end part of Warhammer Ed, 
Uh, just exactly what is everybody drunk drinking tonight? This. Have I drunk tonight a lot? Oh, am I supposed to have a drink? <laughs> you can make one up. Coke. Yeah, I was drinking. drinking. That's long gone. I've had nothing like, because I'm a responsible make. parent. At all, like, um, percent percent well, just, just to be clear, you live in Australia. By default, you are not a responsible parent. <laughs> <laughs> so hold up your can of Fosters and be proud. Fosters, please. <laughs> what the hell is Fosters? You have it's Australian now, then, D. <laughs> That's just terrible. Speaking it's of which, terrible. though, I do have to skedaddle and go and sort out the rest of my household, whom I've just sort of ditched to hang out with you guys. Seems like a wise use of your time. Yep. Yeah. I thought so too. I thought so too. I actually uh, really should probably be signing off as well and uh, bringing things to a close. Yeah, but it's been we... I'm glad you were all able to join us. It's been an enlightening conversation. <laughs> and the rest. That's not so a word how, how long do you think it? your YouTube account will be banned for, Paul? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they're pretty spooked after the uh, grilling that Zuckerberg got this week. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, yeah, you can just be like, "Hey, it wasn't me. It was. <laughs> it wasn't me. It was my ghost profile." Yeah. <laughs> Your account was hacked. It's okay. That's it. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm not a Russian agent, so we're cool. <laughs> <laughs> No, it is. Um, we have our fairy wand and our fairy Aww. crackers, and we are going to go and play Ben and Holly. So, I don't know what you do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. You, well, I you don't know what be... Ben and Holly is. <laughs> Hang on, before you sign off, Paul. Do you guys not have Ben and Holly in the states? What the hell is with the windows and the star wand? No, <laughs> we do not have whatever you're describing right now. No. It's like the best kids' TV show ever, next to. Um, Bob the Builder. <laughs> yeah, Tom, is you this a thing you're aware of? No, this does not exist. None of you, you gave us the wiggles. We're we're making things up. <laughs> you guys all suck. There is all no right, quiet. Out. There is only Paw Patrol. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't get me started on Paw Patrol or Aquanauts. <laughs> God damn it. <sighs> Creature report. Oh, God. <laughs> I know it all too well. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff of nightmares. That's it. Um, oh, oh, also, it's, um, oh, it's Anzac Day oh, over God. here. It's Anzac Day over here in the next few days. So to any of you fine gentlemen who have or still are serving, thank you very much for your service. <laughs> That is a great sign I think Dave is serving right now. Yep. <clears throat> Anywho, uh, I'm going to sign off for the evening, gentlemen. It's been fun. Thank you all for joining all of your contributions, the, the wisdom that's been shared. Our wisdom. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the time. Bye, Paul. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. Bye. <laughs> on Paul Conti's channel, Daisy tells all. <laughs> <laughs> See you, boys. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>